Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Climb. Today, with not just one guest, but two, we have the special MBT with us here, in addition to Matthew Bell. How are you guys doing today? Hello, Awful. Everyone. Just terrible. To <laughs> terrible. Wow, today, that's... Uh, we're one. hoping for a little bit better than that, but no, I'm, I'm doing great. You know, apart from this cold I managed to pick up from a work trip, but we're going to tough this out, because when, when I heard we were having MBT on the show, I was like, no, 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 we're going to rally. We're going to take some pills, and we're going to be great. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to this. Alrighty, so it has been a couple of weeks. There hasn't been much in the way of changes to the overall game of Master Duel, but we did finally start the NNR Rarity Festival. What have your guys' thoughts been on that so far? Okay, I guess I'll, uh, I'll start. I haven't played it uh, at all. Uh, I was actually waiting until you told me what deck was good to play, and <laughs> then I was just going to play that. Um, I had high hopes for it. I, I'm really, I, what I really appreciate about it is that uh, just by virtue of, of spending a, an amount of money that is shocking on this game, I have collected 10 quadrillion N and R dust. So I can basically build whatever I want, which is a new experience for me. And it's been fun to uh, port between uh, decks back and forth. Uh, it's a little upsetting that the two top decks are the two top decks by a mile. Uh, but um, I have appreciated that there's a lot of people on ladder who aren't playing uh, Metal Foes and Megalith, and um, we've I, I think we've come away with a really interesting event that I like a lot. Yeah, I uh, I actually <laughs> have encountered a lot less of those. Um, anyone watching and seeing the screen right now will actually notice that I deliberately left myself in gold because I remember during the Xyz event that by being in plat, I was only paired against other people in plat. <laughs> And I was curious how it would change to only get paired against people in gold for the event. And, how was it? <laughs> uh, so I built a deck that just completely annihilates the Megalith and Metal Foes decks. And sure enough, every time I face those, I win. But I would find the most random stuff. Like, I played against this one Red Eyes deck that just pinned me to the wall. I could not beat it. It was unbelievably good. Ow. Um... That is super exciting, yeah. Uh, I think there are a lot of uh, really interesting options that would have come out in sort of a longer uh, version of this event. And I really appreciate, unlike the Xyz event, in which people were uh, pretty much just playing TCG decks that only rely on uh, Xyz cards, um, we've had like so much interest in uh, tournament play. I know a ton of Yugi tubers are doing their own uh, NR series. Um, and as a result, uh, there's just this like huge exploration of this uh, format specifically in a way that there wasn't in the last one. And so I am glad that occasionally we're running into decks that are like, oh yeah, there's no way to beat this. <laughs> so uh, in the interest of our audience uh, not universally knowing who you are, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself so that they can get to know you? Yeah, uh, so my name is uh, Joseph Rothschild. Uh, that is not a bit, that is my name. Um, I'm uh, MBT Yu-Gi-Oh! Online. Uh, I make, uh, I guess daily now, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube content uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, and uh, I am also the co-host of uh, History of Yu-Gi-Oh! and History of Jank on Simo, the fellow yu gi -Tubers channel. Um, I run a monthly tournament series called the Chalice Lime Monthly. And um, in my free time, I like gardening. <laughs> Nice. I, I would have I, never the, pegged you for a gardening. Yeah, the I'm gardening thing lie. caught me off guard. <laughs> I know it's 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 just exceptional. There, I'm I'm pretty limited in the scale of how much gardening I can do. I, I live in an apartment right now. But, so it's um, like just a green I'm, thumbnail. Well, it is just my my wife is like frustrated at me when I'll come home with plants and she'll be like, "We do not have room for plants," and I'm like, "Well." Ah, we could find room. <laughs> so I just guess we're going to have to fry out your shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, right. Skinnerbeard. Welcome. Uh, he's someone I see on the uh, Herman Lee streams. So that's really cool to see him here. How you doing? So, uh, oh my gosh, gardening. I have actually never gardened when I think about it. I used to like go in the backyard and help my mom, but she was like planting like rhubarb and I was a kid. Like I don't really count that. How long right. have you been into gardening? Oh, um... It was just something I could randomly do at a uh, a living situation of mine that was not fantastic uh, when I was sort of couch surfing uh, in like 2017, 2018. 
Um, it was just something I could like randomly had control over. And so I got really into it and I really like doing it, but uh, currently shopping around for a house with a yard so I can, you know, uh, throw the middle finger to the HOA and grow corn in my front lawn or something. Nice. Uh, thank you to Toucan Tyler for the follow. So with uh, the NNR festival, you said there was two decks that were that you feel stood out as the best two. Is that what you yourself played or were you on something else? Oh, thank you to Maddie Wilmot as well. Uh, so for the first uh, couple of days of the NR Fest, I um, I was uh, away um, on like a little vacation with my wife, and I wanted to play something where I could just mindlessly do it um, in the background. So I played, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like Fluffle Danger Dark World, just a bunch of garbage cards that all discard themselves, and you occasionally get some synergies out of it. Just because like if your opponent is playing something incompetent a big 2800 guys wins the game um <laughs> are you the real MBT when I got... or are you a fake mbt <laughs> this is this is the fake mbt ah. uh this is I'm, I'm actually the swag kage impersonator from uh, real heads no uh but when i got back i i just jumped onto um the metal foes deck i found to be the least frustrating um i i don't want to have to read the fa cards i apologize um and <laughs> I really wanted to because I, I play Metal Foes occasionally in paper. Yeah. Uh, it's a deck that I've like been repping like off and on for the last like year and a half, ever since the Souls release. And um, it's nice to see that it is competitively viable somewhere. Uh, yeah. And uh, also for some reason, Vortex Dragon and Absolute are both legal in this event. So, you know, yeah. we do what we have to. <laughs> the moment I heard, oh, uh, thank you to Dav GHF. Uh, the moment I heard Mithrilium was still gonna be legal, I was like, oh. <laughs> Well, it's like, oh, really? That, sure. Like, twist my arm, right? But uh, if you insist, I, I still. Oh, uh, thank you to N O H H P. Um, I was hopping between a pair of different decks in the regular ladder, and <laughs> oh, thank you to Gribble McRimba. Um, I, I was playing the book bag turbo deck. And when they announced their, like, big ban list, they're like, yeah, we're just going to ban the True Drago cards. I was like, well, I'm going to have to find something else to play then. Uh, thank you to Lil Rad's S. And then I saw the actual list, and they were like, yeah, we're just limiting uh, Apocalypse. And I was like, that's the one I need the least for this format. Okay, cool. Fuzzy Wobbles, thank you for the follow. So I, I knowing that I could just play Megalith, like, obviously full is ridiculous. Thank you to Spectral City. I wanted right. to see how well I could do with the true Draco things and immediately found out that without three Dynamite Knight in your deck, you do not have anything close to enough monsters. Thank you to White Wolf 9220. So I explored like the other worm monsters. I put the pair of Draeths in, but mm -hmm. uh, ultimately it just came down to like, why don't I just use a Lumirage and Knight Dragolich? And those two cards alone have carried me through almost the entire thing. Thank you to Wolfie69. Uh, Night Dragon, a, a classically frustrating card. Yeah. When it first came out, it was my answer to shooting Quasar Dragon. But, oh, um, gosh. The, uh, the thing about Night Dragon that catches most people off guard, and unfortunately I don't have any replays because they were just, they were too quick, is setting yeah, him. Like, oh, joy, I summoned it and won. Yeah, like, there, if you set Night Dragon and pass, you win a lot of duels doing that and i just i didn't get any interesting replays because they would do something like summon summon fuse attack scoop uh for those who don't know at home dragolich will apply in the damage step after flipping up and then negate the attack by switching their monster to defense mode and putting their monster to zero defense and then on your turn you just board wipe them and they can never come back from it um the other was the illumirage who only loses to Link monsters, and believe it or not, uh, Mithrilium is a 2600 six star monster, which is like the requirement to hit. You have to like, you have to be overstatted for your level to deal with the Lumirage. Thank you to Rattles One. So, right. between things like Solidarity and Celestia giving like attack boosts to these two cards, it created this really obnoxious deck that stall long enough for me to compensate for the lack of pot of desires and so on until all the draco stuff could just steamroll them there mm -hmm. was also uh the stunning realization 
to um, those of my friends who were playing my deck, that Dreyf the Third does not have to be tribute summoned to get its effect. So it will uh, very easily lock them out of the game. If you control two Dreyf the Thirds, that's the game. Like there, there's very little you can do in the NR festival to um, deal with that as neither of them can be targeted anymore and they have 2800 defense and you can just sit there and deck them out in a lot of matchups. Uh, thank you to the Swamp Fox. So just typically the, uh, what we miserable, do... I'm sorry? Miserable memory of Dreath 2 at the very start of true Draco format when players were just jamming anything with worm typing. <laughs> um, I had a friend top 16 the NAWCQ that year playing to Dreath 2 in Draco and I was like, why are you doing this? He's like, it's not good. But every time it comes up, it's the funniest thing ever. My opponents actually are are just they feel uh, they feel like I'm better than them, and that's really what I'm chasing. <laughs> it, oh, I love uh, that level of superiority. That's <laughs> that's hilarious. It's like great. Dude. There's something spectacular uh, about having the first Dreyth float into the second one, and then True King's return summoning back the first, and awful. the it's game just is just over. So. Uh, I, I have some replays of my own, but I want to go over any of yours. Do you have any saved? Uh, I do. I've got three replays literally from earlier today. I was like, all right, cool. and, and I'll just let you know, these are long and complex. <laughs> That's all right. All of mine are too. Uh, I will okay. need your user ID. So I'm going to type it on stream so everyone else can get it too. So you can get lots of followers. Yeah, I think at this point, anyone who wants to be following me is already following me you are pretty uh, popular so i can imagine that eight four seven zero nine zero there we go that is five six seven which i accidentally typed on the wrong screen five six seven eight four seven oh no no uh, apparently i just didn't put the hyphens in oh it's because i didn't click on the right button the i think these are the the replays i have i think are interesting uh, if only because I am 100% certain I did not play optimally. So, like, there okay. will be stuff to talk about, but it's really hard to figure out what exactly I screwed up. Unfathomable. Love it. The non-normal summoner. I do not remember how to get any of the titles, but I ended up with that one from playing, like, Outlet or something. It, you get uh, it for so... winning a duel without normal summoning. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. I think the first one is the, the snooziest of the three. Um... So I'm playing uh, Cosmo Metal Foes, uh, which I, I absolutely love for this event. Uh, certainly, I think that the more powerful version is FA, uh, but then you have to read all these cards. So that's just not my style. <laughs> um, so it's basically all the legal Metal Foes, uh, Triple Bayo Baboon, uh, and then you play three Dark Lady, three Forerunner, which floats into Dark Lady. Uh, not a lot in this format is like prepared for Dark Lady. It's just randomly a very powerful card. Um, yes. Bayo Baboon is something that was popular at the very start of the Metal Foes lifespan uh, and then fell off as they got like better normal summons. Now, of course, you're always tunneling onto something like Magical Abductor. But I play this in TCG as well um, because it can make Cross Sheep by way of Sun Avalon Dryass, which is shockingly also an R. <laughs> I've always thought that his name was like a typo or something because he's a Boab tree. I always thought it was supposed to be Boab Baboon. Oh, I thought they were called Baobabs. <laughs> They're Boabs? <laughs> Maybe I thought because of the card. Parts of the world. Biz, you're right. Wow, they literally screwed it up. <laughs> so, well, I don't know about screwed it up. Like, there's probably just other things going on. But when I first saw the card, I was like, huh. Anyway, uh, you've got a pretty sick hand here. I noticed the pair of scales. So let's see. Uh, your opponent went first. And uh, they've yeah, got the so assembly line, so that's fun. They're on a, li a list that I think is really impressive. Um, I, I know Peeps Yu-Gi-Oh! is a big progenitor of this deck, but uh, Earth Machine, I think, is really a consideration uh, in this event. Um, as you're about to see, it has these exceptionally easy Seven Sins lines. Uh, I think everything relevant is legal, um, with the exception of some of the, like, uh, you know, really powerful end bosses. So, like, here we can make um, all the way to Seven Sins just by using the effect of the Harvester. And then afterwards, we can Brutal Dozer. Uh, we can't go all the way through, like, the lines you would do in the TCG, but just getting the uh, Tunneler into rotation is usually good enough. Yeah, and they've they've gone for the classic strategy of my number is bigger than yours and all the good cards are banned. 
yeah, uh, and you know what? Not a terrible strategy, if I'm being honest. <laughs> not awful, not awful. So this is just why I like Baobab in general. Like we've got two to three cards that we really don't want to see. Um, Metal Foes, especially in NR, is just so weighed down by these miserable spell traps. Um, things like uh, Para and uh, Combination and Counter that you do not want to draw at all. So you can just filter them out of your hand like this. We don't want more than one Dark Lady because for some reason the Negate is a hard once per turn. Not exactly sure why that is. Um, so we're just going to draw as many cool scales as we can. And oh, there's a bunch of cool scales. <laughs> I was going to make a Disney joke about why you can only get away with it once, but I don't know how to word it <laughs> in the moment. So you only run the two Boaz? Uh, no, it's three. Uh, one that's top and then two from deck. Ah, oh, okay. That makes sense. I missed that. Ah, uh, yeah. Cross sheet. Cross sheet. Yeah, so... The best thing to summon in both Caligo. Yeah, this is, um... This is a lot less good than it is in the TCG, obviously. Um... What makes the deck even remotely playable in the TCG is that you get, like, a plus six off of Magician Souls. Uh, here, you are just gonna have to be satisfied, like, actually using the cards as they're intended, which sucks. Um, seven Sins, of course, resist destruction. A lot resist destruction in this format, uh, which is why Mithrilium is so absolutely bonkers. The thing that kind of sucks is that um, cards like uh, Dragoobleon uh, resist targeting, and that's something that this deck has a really big problem yeah. with, which the I think you'll see in other place. My biggest takeaway from the NNR Festival has definitely been that people are unaware of how powerful it is to just summon their Dragoobleon in defense position. That alone would yep. win quite a lot of games, and... I myself won matches I had no business winning by my opponent just doing me the favor of putting that thing in attack position. It's like, oh, sure, I guess I'll summon the uh, the Tenyi Link 3. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> or even just, like, uh, different metal foes, uh, uh, true Draco monsters and stuff that can get up there. But, like, there's so, nothing. If it's in defense position, there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm just like, oh, cool, I lose. What's, um, what's strange about this uh, turn is that I, I commit into the... Um, Ethereum because I feel as if uh, my end goal is going to be like bouncing the seven sins and then making Vortex. Um, but by uh, reborning the Prisma Gear from the Cross Sheep, I keep it out of the graveyard, uh, which makes it kind of a little more difficult to like get a productive Mithrilium off. So uh, in the end, I end up having to uh, scale the seven star uh, Volflame, and I just don't have access to um, the additional negate. I think I would need to seal this up here. Uh, thankfully, um, my opponent's hand is just kind of miserable. And while they can do uh, Tunneler here, it's kind of the last thing remaining in their pocket. And uh, while Tunneler is crazy, an incredibly powerful card, you know, there's only so much you can draw into in a deck full of cards that require your normal. Uh, the Brutal Dozer is a fantastic find, but probably insufficient because I think they're missing like a really productive rank five. Yeah, they just sit here. Yeah, that's definitely not a spot you want to be in. <laughs> And, I mean, that's functionally it. <laughs> this is the entirety of Metal Foes. If you ever allow them to get to the position where they can pop their own combination, the game is over, which is just miserable. Um, and one of the reasons why I think... I, this de deck was so powerful for so long, through so many formats, playing so many different types of strategies, um, that it's not surprising that it has the flexibility to, like, adapt from the sort of loathsome combo monstrosity it's become in the TCG into just a, all right, we're going to pen five every turn and you're just going to have to deal with it. Yeah, I remember liking the Metal Foes when they first debuted, but feeling like they needed a little something. And then getting Elkahest and being like, well, there's the little something. And then like a week later, having Mithrilium get revealed and like, oh. <laughs> like, that is many somethings. Yeah, uh, like, this it, is it now is... the deck. Got it. Oh, I think chat actually has it. It was penned three, make ab, make sheep with the ab and the bayo, go into vortex, grab back bow, vortex bounce seven cents. Yes, mage, thank you so much. I was struggling for that line. Um, the second game versus Sisu is, I mean, this is, uh, it's something. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go over Sisu's game then. All right, so, um... This game, I make a couple of, like, small errors, but I think the biggest issue is the way that I conduct my third turn. I would I would really like to hear, like, chat's idea about this one. This is one of those strange hands where you just draw foes and a Bayo Baboon, and you're like, okay, I mean, this is kind of everything I want. So what we're digging for here is just any Cosmo whatsoever. Makes sense to me. 
When you say your third turn, do you mean turn three or turn five? Uh, turn three. Okay. Uh, so, just chaining these bail baboons together. God, I, I miss this so much from TCG. Um, I remember when the Metal Foes first got revealed, um, I was playing them as a control strategy, uh, just because uh, Cleefort had previously been popular as, like, the pendulum deck that plays Card of Demise and doesn't discard because you can scale half your hand. Um, and Metal Foes was just a better version of that. This so I played it like a, that for a little bit. Th this could be a product of that I was playing against people in gold instead of platinum, but anytime I saw the Boab Baboons, they were going into an equipped engineer instead of this cross sheep idea. <laughs> Uh, good luck to them. <laughs> I mean, the McQuick Engineer spins itself to defense and just skips your opponent's turn. It was pretty good. Ugh. All right, so um, here I just set up. I, I love these three. The, um, the uh, Parametaphose Fusion, the uh, combination and the counter. Uh, they just do so much with each other. Uh, we're just doing the uh, PS1 here so we can para. This is frustrating, but I think the only way I could have done this. Drawing too many scales and not enough ways to like get them into rotation means that your pendulum summon's going to be weak. But as long as you have the cross sheep on field, you can still extend pretty far. In the TCG, of course, you go into, uh, oh, what's her name? Apollosa here. But obviously, yeah. you know, I, I got to tell, you know, Konami, congratulations for not printing too many uh, Link monsters with a word negate on them. So uh, <laughs> we have to be satisfied with like this. This is yeah. a pretty mediocre open. I, uh... I, I actually didn't know if there was even a legal Link 4 in the NR Festival because I couldn't think of a single one. Oh, is like Ambro Whale maybe a, a rare? I, <laughs> it's, that's the only thing I could even remotely expect. Kaijus. So it's Kaiju. Um, this is a really sick list. I want to shout out, you know, my opponent specifically. I have not seen this list represented at all, but it's excellent. So the Sidra here threatens the uh, Chimera tech. Um, so I fire the combination, which means that if they extend into it, I'll be able to reborn because it's a fusion. And then I realize it is a special summon of a fusion monster and not a fusion summon. <laughs> uh, so we're just playing Mech Knights here and Kaijus. Uh, Radiant, of course, gets to summon another token. This is a ton of damage, but the Metal Foes monsters all sort of interact with each other in a strange way here. We can use the full on field to go into an Ori Calc, which threatens a removal spell. Because the Ori Calc has more stars than Mithrilium, we can trigger both the Cross Sheep and the Face Up combination in order to bring back the Mithrilium and just like a level three or lower from the graveyard. The Mithrilium, of course, floats into another monster. And I mean, this is just what Metal Foes was doing in like control formats. It's just being so frustrating to <laughs> deal with. This was a board of Cross Sheep and a Vanilla, and now is four monsters that all float into each other. Uh, we get to fire the counter here on the activation. Uh, we're just trying to retain like large attack monsters that have seven stars. And uh, for some reason, Parametaphose Melcaster has 2,500 defense. Um, should have summoned the Silvered in defense, certainly. That 300 is a little horrifying. Just a little bit later, uh, we, we will see. Uh, so in main two, uh, I did not know this, Khmer Tech is an eight. Uh, so they're just going to go into Dracoobleon. I mean, tell me if you've seen this line before. In defense mode. Yeah, the harder. Yep, they are, they're doing it correctly. Yeah, I normally see that card summoning... Uh... What was it Numeron Dragon and then going for the TK? There's a I lot play. of people who don't realize that this thing isn't being summoned properly and wondering like why it's not working. What do you mean? Right. Uh, the this uh, this card wasn't summoned properly, so people. Oh, you mean the reborn effect? Yeah, like this card does not oh, yeah. exe summon this card. Yeah. So this is turn three. So you said you want to chat to give you input on this turn. Did you want them to try and like guess what you're going to do or? Oh, I mean, there's no way they could do that. It's just too many uh, steps. But um, yeah, I, I would appreciate some feedback on the specific lines I take here because we're in a position where like we just straight up have access to everything. But the critical things on this board are I really like uh, when I approach uh, like Metal Foes uh, turn three, um, I'm thinking what is at my disposal and what do I need to remove, right? And for me, uh, the Kyoto is a huge problem. Um, because obviously it represents a card a turn, uh, means that I can never stick anything meaningful like a Vortex Dragon. Uh, the Dragoobleon is maybe an issue. Hard to say if they are playing an extra deck that like includes the necessary cards to fire it twice. I know most people are not. And then the, um, the Heart Earth, of course, I have to deal with. Uh, the Dragoobleon specifically is almost impossible for me to deal with because everything in my deck targets. So I figure I have to just kind of roll the dice and be like, okay, they're not going to be able to fire it again. Um, so this turn, I am basically attempting to hit the Kyoto, the Heart Earth, and the back row. 
and this is how I do it, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, so we begin just making any old rank 2 here. I, I think it's a Geonator, yeah. Uh, this is to trigger the effect of the Ori, Calc, and Grave, um, and get the 7 into rotation. I hit the Dark Factory of More. Dark Factory of More production, I think, is criminally underrated in formats like this. Just an exceptionally powerful control tool, especially if you're doing stuff like drawing two cards to turn off Kyoto. So we go for the Para and the Combination. The Combination here adds a 1. Uh, we're just trying to get scales set uh, while still retaining access to most of our 7s. We combo here so that we have uh, a 7 in hand because we aim to use just the um, Silvered from the Extra. Um, now here's where things go a little wonky. Oh, that, I like the animation of just the fourth one hitting the Vori. That was cool. Just wham! Uh, you go ahead and make the Xyz monster here, right? Um, and... Uh, this means we can, I believe, shuffle? I'm I, I'm literally playing this card. I should know what it does. Um, one of the monsters back onto the field with the summon effect of Vortex Dragon. Yeah, it bounces it to the hand. So we go for the token here because I can't target the one I really want to. And then we summon Jaja. -Ja. Um, the way that I conduct this turn, I have the uh, four metal foes on field, two of which turn into Jaja, -Ja, two of which turn into Odd-Eyes Vortex Dragon, so I lack the remaining one on field necessary to also make the Mithrilium. I'm trying to figure out how I could have potentially ordered this differently to cause that to happen, but as is, uh, we're just going to have to um, be satisfied with like the combination and uh, pass turn. I think by procking the Parametaphos post-Pendulum Summon, we maybe could have done it. Still difficult. But as a result, um, while we were able to destroy the uh, the Hard Earth, uh, we can't stop the Dredugleon. Um Jaja, of course, putting in a ton of work, but a really perilous position in terms of life points. <laughs> and thank you to Pamek EUW for the follow-up. So he's pivoted back to being on the offense. Right. Um, Jaja's effect is until the end of your opponent's turn, so I do get to eat the token, but that's not... That big of a comfort, and I'm just in a position where, like, outing the Dragoobleon is too difficult. Uh, the Forerunner is nice? I can't really tell if it's what I need. Uh, we pop the combination to get a copy of Counter. Um, that's kind of important. So this turn, um, because I'm at 24, I have to use the Jaw Jaw to remove the Dragoobleon, because if you hover my extra, you'll see I actually just straight up do not have another out to the card. Uh, so we pend as much as we can. Uh, we have to fire off the Parametaphose Fusion to go into a Mithrilium so that I can reset the counter on the uh, Kyoto Waterfront. Uh, Kyoto Waterfront, of course, avoids destruction, um, provided it's got counters, which means that outside of, like, shuffling, it's actually really hard to make this work. Uh, we're shuffling a 7 back into the deck as well with Mithrilium because we're out, we're firing Jaja. -Ja. Uh, we're going to go to combat. This is not ideal. We'll take 2k and go down to 400 so we can banish the Dragoobleon. Then we'll crash into the Radian, which triggers the Forerunner. Uh, we'll use Forerunner to summon Dark Lady in defense so we don't get destroyed by, like, two Kaijus. Then in main phase two, we have to use the Rare Metaphose Bisma gear to pop for the combination we shuffled back so we don't die to the attack position Jaja. -Ja. So what we're hoping here is that our opponent doesn't have, like, a low attack Kaiju. We've seen Ghidorla, Radian, and Jizzy Kuri out of our opponent, uh, and then, like, a high attack one. Uh, they go for the Kyoto. Realistically, I think it's unlikely they can do it here. They just set two pass. Uh, so we have to mount, like, a lethal attack here, because if we commit to anything, the Kyoto will be high enough that they'll be able to do it next turn. So we go for the back row here. Unfortunately, it's Dino Micious, which is, like, the worst-case scenario, but also the reason I'm prioritizing the back row. Uh, they're going to target the Mithrilium, which is pain, obviously. Um, but we do get to resolve it and put the seven back in deck, which means we can Summoner's Art for one while retaining the one that we shuffled back last turn into the deck as well. So we fire off the combination here. We can use any of them to do the combination. They get to summon back the Dynomicious. So I'm aiming for a three monster attack that will do 5,400 to my opponent, which I don't think is too out of the realm of the ordinary. I have no idea what the set card is because it's not like you can set hand traps in this format because no one is playing them. <laughs> so uh, we will go for counter off of the... Um, the combo pop here, that's going to allow us to summon from deck a uh, Volflame. We can trigger the combo to get, yeah, I think this is the highest attack metal foe remaining in the deck. Uh, then we can PS3, the two sevens in hand, and the one from the extra. We don't have any Xyz to go into here, uh, but I figure I just kind of have to roll the dice here and hope that whatever the set card is, it isn't like Dice Jar. Um, it ends up being Cyber Dragon Hurts, uh, and so we do get to walk with this, but I feel like I played that third turn super precarious and turned what was supposed to be like walking away with the game to like a really close one just by virtue of mismanaging uh metal foes and ending in a position where like i didn't have access to mithrilium 
I, I will make a note that if YugiTube ever stops working out for you, you may want to get into auctioneering because you got some bars, man. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not no, gonna lie. I, sorry, go ahead, just, go ahead. Yeah, sorry to just talk continuously for five minutes on that one. I just find the um, Metal Foes control games so interesting. And I think that uh, you get, a, there are a lot of scenarios where like, really minute differences are the differences between like a win and a loss like in that game specifically if i had summoned the silvered and the mithrilium in the defense in defense position the turn i was taking a ton of damage i would have had the amount of life points necessary to negate a monster effect with dark lady and yeah. it, it, there is a non-zero chance that matters it's just a really interesting deck to play and it's the lines are so difficult that i i really like, I, I tend to spend a lot of time just, like, obsessing over, like, how could I have sequenced this differently? I'm not going to lie, that was way more interesting to watch than most of the normal ranked ladder. Like, there was so much thought going into each of those plays and situations, for example, get making sure you clear your monsters out so you don't just get swung over. The differences you made about having 1,100 life points and being on exactly 1,000 there with the Dark Lady. Like, I... Generally not a fan of alternate formats, but watching this is getting me kind of, like, pumped. I, I kind of wish I took more part in this. Yeah, well, you do um, have lots of time left. I was originally just playing the uh, the like Fluffle OTK deck, and I was farming replays for this, and I was just like, these are terrible. It's just like my opponent made a play, and then I did enough dangers to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Chat says Amalgam? Whoa. Amalgam, yeah. What is that? Yeah, what is that card? The uh, uh... Heavy Metal Foes. This is the, this is the card that replaced uh electrovite right uh for now i suppose uh, oh no i was not playing this card i potentially i should have been yeah this is um this is the way for your orichalc to walk over the 3800 defense wow thank you so much chat that is exactly what i needed to hear He's got just terrible zones, though. Just yeah, he's he's zones. the one that is a threat to uh, my board as well because he is that a thousand attack boost. <laughs> mm. It's so funny that they were like, "Yeah, what does Metal Foes need to compete? Acts of Despair. You got it. Let's go." <laughs> hey, sometimes that one Axe of Despair is enough to get you there. I mean, that was a match in which I really needed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, I haven't encountered the defense mode Dragloobium yet, so it was. Certainly it's it's strange. That. It's just so much better. There's nothing in the format that outs it. Oh, there you are. So you have one left. This is your most recent game. Oh yeah. This this was like literally five minutes before this. Let me see if I can remember what we uh what what it was. I want to say my opponent is on. I, I couldn't even guess. There's no way that it's also machine, right? I have been facing so much Earth Machine. This is a miserable hand. Yeah, so this is what a bad hand looks like in this deck. Um, yeah, oh, they're on this deck. This deck is so sick. Uh, it's just Pepe. It's just uh, Magispector Pepe. Um, <laughs> the oh, Magispector Magis cards Pepe. Are I remember crazy. that being a pretty good deck back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they good. just made Bunbuku, but this player is on, like, a pretty sizable Magispector package, and... Um, Co or not Cosmo. Um, Metal Foes needs like a setup turn and then a second turn. Uh, and without the second turn, things can go very poorly. So as you can see, we have the double Metal Foes counter. Um, thankfully, those are once per turn and do trigger when anything is destroyed. So we're not completely locked out of it. Uh, but still not where you want to be doing just Dark Lady Pass. Uh, while the Magispectors are like, oh, and this is a fantastic scenario. We get to just negate the Odd Eyes Dissolver. It never happens. Um, while the Magispectors are available to be negated, uh, you can't destroy them, um, meaning that, like, even if we Dark Lady a big Pendulum Summon, our opponent is going to be able to, like, potentially overlay for something. And while there's not a ton of really good monsters in this format, uh, the three pool is surprisingly deep. Uh, they have, like, Grand Pulse, um, uh, Bamboozler, uh, Jaja is incredible, of course. Uh, but here they get to trigger uh, Ogama, Kyobi, and Neko. And unfortunately... Um, I get to order the chain, so I have to go for the Neko in terms of negation. Um, I almost held this just because I was like, eh, if they overlay for something, this is maybe a little bit more important. But I think I just want to, like, cash my chips in on the Dark Lady and be like, okay, we got what we did. Um, there are a ton of Magispector spell traps legal. I was shocked to see both Tempest and uh, 
whatever the wind tornado one is, uh, both available. Uh, Malevolent Sin here, um, kind of a part of, I think Duel Link's meta released like what they expected to be the top four or five extra deck monsters, and this was like the top of the list. It's just such an accessible uh, piece of removal that, uh, you know, interacts in a weird way with the entire format. You know, a lot resists destruction, almost nothing resists banishing. Uh, so here we're just doing counter counter, just getting as many sevens on field as possible. Well, yeah, you gotta get that Vortex Dragon. Uh, sort of. We, we have to get rid of the, uh, the on-field uh, Neko first, because otherwise all of this is legal. Magic Spectre Tornado is going to trade for one of them. We draw the Fusion, which is insane. Uh, that means we can go Fusion, um, and then at Resolution, uh, we can... I think we go into Orichalc here. The Orichalc is one of the very few cards that actually outs the 2700 um, uh, Spider. Uh, but here we get to pop it. Uh, and then, uh, because those both went to the face-up extra, we can in main phase two fire the combination, uh, use the silver on the combination, uh, pop that sucker, get ourselves a copy of Para. Uh, if we want, we can Para away the Orichalc to get one of the um, two uh, copies of the Volflame into the graveyard. I elect instead to just use counter to put them back into the hand. And then we can make a big old Pendulum Summon. Um, what we're trying to do here is just cut our opponent off of scales, which I think is the only way we lose this. Uh, if the Magic Spectre deck is allowed to like perform two or three Pendulum Summons, it is kind of the end of the game. Um, I think that this deck is very, very good in this format. So we're going to shoot for the um, the high scale, just because Guitardle is so much more punishing if they find another scale, right? They get to uh, pick two. Even though Paratrio is like modular. Um, we'll go for Mithrilium. It's not fantastic here. Uh, but at least we get to reset the counter on Tempest. So if I want to activate a monster effect on my opponent's turn, we have the capacity to do so, uh, you know, and they'll just have to wait until their next turn, even if they find a scale to do it. Um, Steel in here, popping the Mithrilium to get a copy of Combination so we can trigger the Mithrilium effect in Graveyard and get the seven that we uh, had in the extra deck to the EMZ that's now clear, uh, means that we can go into uh, Absolute Dragon. This is crusty. We have to make Triple Burst Dragon with our entire field. Uh, the typing just doesn't line up correctly um, to do exactly what we want uh, because then we get to trigger the Absolute Dragon uh, at a point where we actually have a monster in the extra deck. If we had just gone uh, the other two in, uh, that Steelin would be stranded on field. And that's it. <laughs> I didn't... Uh, I, I probably would have misplayed that when I was looking at, okay, and I used Cross Sheep and the Absolute Dragon, but I missed the uh, empty extra deck part. I have scummed a lot of wins off of Metal Foes players who were like, great, now it's Vortex time, and I have nothing in the extra. <laughs> <laughs> I've only ever summoned it in Zephyr decks where I've got like seven or eight in there by that point. Oh, yeah. I uh, thank the Lord for Zephrath, by the way, and also thank the Lord it's not legal for this event. So that, <laughs> those are the only ones I found sort of remotely interesting. Uh, obviously, the second one, I think, uh, had the most depth to it. Um, but uh, most of what I have been playing is completely ignorant. Like, while my wife and I are talking, I can just drag dangers to the field and be like, good luck to my opponent. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I honestly, I do really. Uh, I first started the event thinking, like, Okay, none of the decks are going to do anything too flashy. I can just kind of half-ass a lot of this. And I was very wrong. Uh, you do end up, like... I, I had, like, one time I had ordered food. I was like, okay, it's going to get here in, like, 20 minutes. That gives me time to, like, play a game. That'll be fine. And then, like, 32 minutes later, I've had cold food on my porch for 10 minutes. Like, they, it's, um, it's actually surprising how long these games can be, right? Yeah, like, yeah I mean... Look at these 13 and 15 go... turn games, 5 and 8, and like even this 5-turn oh, yeah. one, I think this was like close to half an hour long. I was playing like an OTK deck and going to like turn 12, because like my opponent and I would just, we'd blow our loads, we'd both have a Dynomitius, and we'd look at each other and be like, all right, who's drawing the win con first? You know, it, it's not a problem in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, where every individual card is your full combo, but... If you, you need know. like four or five cards to go off and your opponent answers your board, then what's up? So I actually don't remember what order these are in. I know what the Let's four go. games are, but <laughs> it's, I, I've had so much that I've just been doing. As soon as I see like what cards my opponent plays, I'll be like, oh yeah, it was the dragon made one or oh yeah, it was this one. So this is long enough ago that I was playing March of the Monarchs. Um, so I do have a slightly and lower monster count. I'm not on Lindblum and stuff yet. But Shouts I, out to March of the Monarchs, just the, the biggest trap in the history of, of card games. This card reads like it wins you the game, and in reality, it does nothing. <laughs> well, it, it, it is 
more or less that. What I did find with it was that any hand that I could get a tribute monster and it into play, it didn't matter because no one was playing the Dark Hole this format. Right. So I was just like, uh, why do I play this card? <laughs> so I just cut it for better just... things. <laughs> I, I have fond memories of going back and forth on this card like 45 times in Domain Monarch format and being like, no, but it's so good. What if they try to destroy my monsters? Finally, one of my friends was like, what if they try to destroy your monsters? Oh, God, your Erebus is in the grave. What are you going to do? And I'm like, you're right. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so this is just, this is Almiraz. Let's go! And, Metal Foes again! And he's on wow. Metal Foes. Oh, sheesh. All right, so this is obviously not where you want to be with uh, with Parametaphos, um, just because... Oh, no, they drew all three! <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to be able to trigger the effect, but uh, it is what it is. Oh, Lord Almighty, it's the FA version. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, imagine uh, my heartbreak when there's, like, one monster in the game that can kill this thing in battle, <laughs> and it's this one, and he it's had like it. the most popular monster in the entire uh, yeah. format. Yeah, I can see that being pretty challenging and pretty demoralizing. Yeah, this is this is very strange. I think Hang On Mock has to be exactly a seven to be a Dark Law, right? Yeah. So it will be when you enter main, right? Yeah, there we yep. go. Yep. Uh, so, ooh, this is kind of crusty. Good that you can at least get rid of it, but yeah, here comes the counter. Man, I, I am really surprised at how much work Dimensional uh, Fissure did for you here. Um, I mean, they're kind of playing with their cards on the table at this point. This was the first card I put in my deck. As soon as the event started, I was like, oh, three-dimensional Fissure just dominates this entire format. Oh, yeah. Every I mean, deck it, in the NR Festival here. loses to dimensional Fissure, including my own. So I just wanted to put it up for turn one with the Almirage and then get it off my board for my turn so it doesn't come back to screw. That's smart. I If only Shifter was legal. Then right? Uh, it, sure it's like time. the old... Uh, use emptiness on their first turn, pop your own emptiness to just go off idea, but yeah. popping my own defissure was called summon monster. Mm -hmm. the unbeatable combination of uh, True King's Return plus Dryath, right? This is, wow, that's a, wow, that is a really bad decision. Whoa, <laughs> <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Quick, put the Return of the Monarchs in the hand? Very strange, very strange. I don't know. If it was me, I would have just gone to combat. <laughs> and so you do get the Bayo Baboon, that's fine. But like this is, you know, it wouldn't matter in TCG because you'd have just a wealth of unbelievable options at your disposal. But when your Bayo Bob is just ordering the top of your deck instead of filtering your hand, it's just terrible. I mean, it's just an awful card. This is one of the reasons why modern Metal Foes decks kind of shy away from this. Or at least they did once we got uh, Illusion of Chaos. Um, just the Magician Souls is just so much better as a, a space filler. Grand Pulse Grand Pul for my lack of back row. Slow effect Grand Pulse. Wow. Ah, wow. 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 Oh, truly, truly outrageous. Okay, so we, we have Dryath in defense. We, uh, it's you're... just... Two of the two of us staring at 2800 defense monsters. Uh, is Disciples on? I think we're missing one, right? Yeah. Okay, just get all, all the counters. What? Yeah, fire, fire the counter. Why not? Into the monster that eats the monster. <laughs> the thing oh, is, Grand Pulse live. Yeah, this is chonky. Even through Almirage, like, all I do is not beat it, but he. He, this guy is really trigger happy, and all he does is like yeah. to give me free cards. I, I feel like, I mean, this was historically the problem with True Draco is if your opponent was, you know, sort of clever enough to read the text on your cards and realize they should not just be firing into Ignis, um, then things were uh, not great. But I like how you basically just explained the bar is so low. It's like if your opponent wasn't smart enough to just read your card, which is right oh, in front of them. What? Why would you pop the one that pops the scales? That's the, the why the, I put it on the, the board. Whole, <laughs> oh, the whole hand is Volflames. We can't scale now. <laughs> we have to, what? So <laughs> we have snatched defeat <laughs> from the jaws of victory three turns in a row. This Metal Foes player. Around eight oh, years no. ago, a guy named Joseph Giorlando 
gave me one of the most important lessons I've ever learned as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, which is people are stupid until proven smart, and if you give them an opportunity to do something dumb, they'll take it. So I oh, activated Joe Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix with only two cards in my graveyard. Uh, allowing your opponent to... Uh, like, putting more pieces on the board for your opponent to step around does occasionally net you games you should not have won. It's You just give them a couple inches of rope so they can hang themselves with it. I mean, the weird thing about that is, it's like, strategically, that's just a complete wrong move to make. But then it does, it randomly pays off just often enough that it's still worth making, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> what? No, come on. Oh, <laughs> we read none of these cards. <laughs> I, I do, I think my favorite play this turn, there are many plays that were ridiculous. My favorite by a large margin uh, was Return the Almirage to Hand. That was my favorite. We could have gone to combat, but we wanted to return it to hand. The uh, the Grand Pulse walks over it, but we had to return it to hand. <laughs> He's too afraid to put the Grand Pulse in attack mode because then I have an out. Back again? You're kidding me. <laughs> okay, so at, from this position, if you're the Metal Foes player, you should be considering what your out to Dryath is. And they're kind of few and far between. There's not like a ton of them. Um, I, does Dryath have to go to Grave? I think it does, right? Uh, to summon from the deck, yes. And also, this one was summoned from the deck, so it doesn't do anything except be the only targetable card on the field. Right, so uh, all you have to do here is... Oh my god, even Mithrilium answers this, right? Yeah. And we and we just don't, and we just don't do it. Oh boy. Uh, anyway, um, people consider... Whoa! I mean... Uh, I, I suppose so. I, I don't... Whoa, no. <laughs> oh, this, uh, this, this one's not, this one's not going so hot. <laughs> He's only got the two in there. <laughs> uh, okay. No, um, I mean, this is, I, I don't want to be too hard on this player just because, you know, Metal Foes is a very complicated deck that you log onto the internet and see is the best deck in this format. So you pick it up and you're like, oh, they're all vanillas. How hard could it be? Um, and, you know, there is a lot you actually have to be cognizant of, but it, it does pay off, you know, to, to try and figure out what you're doing. At minimum, in a Pendulum deck, you should probably be concerned, you know, first and foremost with doing the thing that makes Pendulums good, which is uh, setting scales and then summoning as many as possible every turn. But like he, so, I still have to work for it. This is far from a buy. Is this a third Mithrilium? I guess that makes sense. You know, uh, might as well. Um, but this is also the third Mithrilium. So like after this one's out, that is a. Uh, oh no, we can shuffle back the Mithrilium and and bounce again and bounce the Almirage. They know you know something that they don't about this Almirage. I don't understand. <laughs> oh, and there's the Brigolich. There's my that's... buddy. Thank you to Blurbier for the follow. -up. Whack my board. <laughs> was was that a yeah, the Mithrilium goes to banished. So we have one Mithrilium still an extra. I can't imagine what this deck is able to do here. Oh, finally. This is the part of the deck that is quite strong, is the uh just cycling the field spells as free pop material. Um but the portion that I dislike about this build of the deck is it's just it's so absolutely bricky as a result. You can find just the too many copies of field spells, too many copies of the Metal Foes back row, and you just weasel yourself into positions like this. Oh, you really did have to work for that. That is... That's yeah, rough. That was a bit of a Grindlord game right there. <laughs> but it is kind of a, um, a testament to how, uh, you know, formats like this that are slower... Uh, kind of require your opponent to play less oh this deck is sick uh click yes turbo and more like okay from it, it's a skill that you get from like playing like Yu-Gi-Oh and like goat and like 2000 like 9 10 that guy where was you're, on like, the dry ass i guess he just like you said he got it yeah, from master dual meta yeah but like uh, you need to be thinking from the get like what are my outs to common cards like how am I conserving the resources in deck so that if my opponent summons this, I have an answer to it? And if you're just, like, firing off Mithrilliums every single time you can, like, obviously that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, Dragon Maids are the natural uh, predator of Matthew Bell's in uh, nature. <laughs> so, I, I particularly I like this replay because it 
It's gonna torture him a little bit. I, I hate playing against Dragon Mates. Like the pure deck that just makes Xiao over and over again? Yeah. Yeah, the thing that bothers me about them is that I have to read all of their cards and they do a bunch of stuff in my turn as well as their turn. And it's like, at that point, I'm like, whenever you play a deck that wants to go first and set up a big negation field, I kind of need to know how your combos work as well as mine in order to best interact with you. Otherwise, I end up firing off negation in the wrong steps. And I just find it really frustrating that their cards do so many things. <laughs> I've been playing Altergeist since like 2019. My entire life is knowing what my opponent's deck does in addition to what mine does. <laughs> Yeah, you always end up in that awkward spot where you're sat at the YCS and you're like, oh, your card doesn't do that. And you're like, yeah, it does. You're like, no, no, I, I know exactly how your deck works and that is not what your card does. So there's little in the world that hurts me more than the opening hand solidarity because it's like these two in tandem is just gross. But in order to get this guy turned on, I do have to get something in the graveyard. Right. This is, I mean, maybe we can wield the divine... <laughs> That's all this is. Like, this turn is just, I'm going to get a plus off the Majesty Maiden no matter what he does, and sure enough. Uh, the one thing that really impresses me about Dragon Maid, especially in NR, is uh, how flexible Laundry Dragon is, I think has kind of been the uh, story of this one. Because, like, historically, it's the one that you don't play in Dragon Maid. Fantastic Divine Wrath, just killer. Um, but in this format, not only is it good in Dragon Maid, it's good in a, a ton of, like, decks where you would... Otherwise, be playing like Curry Bandit <laughs> if it wasn't terrible, or like Backjack or something. And uh, oh wow, Long oh this. we are gonna hit for ten million. Now, your opponent has four back row, and you're in the NR Rarity Festival. So if you're me, and it's the start of the festival, and you're feeling a little cocky and haven't looked at the card pool, the first thing you're gonna do is do something you haven't been allowed to for years, and that is. Put stuff across from your opponent's back row, because there's no infinite impermanence. It's an ultra rare. So what, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, it's going to uh, be that uh, set fuse or whatever it is, right? Destroy site in the same row. So, Lasting yeah, line? I'm just going to whack him for what isn't 8,000, but I feel pretty good here. But he's got four wow, back row, and I picked two of them. Boy, did I pick two of them. So yeah, you just got cocky. It's gonna be like I think it might be fuse line the card. Oh god, no, no I feel like I'm on a giveaway game show and I'm just like uh, shouting at the TV. Oh, it's <laughs> it's fuse line. It's fuse line. <laughs> fuse line is a rare? Absolutely not. Oh, oh it, it is. is fuse line. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. So oh, I get right. like now on the one hand I deserved that. I, I felt like, hey, this is the only time I'll ever be allowed to do this, so I'll get, like, the years of wanting to do it out of my system. And, of course, he had four back row, and I happened to just pick the fuse line, so that made me feel a little uncomfortable. But at least I still got a 2500 Dragolith. Like I said, this is game. This, like, combination here, this beats just about everybody. <coughs> the, the backup one was, like, enormous, and it turns out that Dragon Pains just don't care because they summon from the hand. Parlor is just such an impressively powerful card. Yeah. I remember when the It and Kitchen first came out, everyone was like, well, Kitchen's the good one. <laughs> Oof. This is a series of stinkers. Going to the battle phase is kind of interesting. If I'm your opponent, I, I maybe just let this happen, right? What, what do we get from adding the parlor back in a hand where we're already so ahead on advantage? Although I'm saying that with the knowledge that, like, your hand is clogged on dudes. So I know okay, so he's got here. Uh, Tink Hex kitchen anagrams or whatever, and now I know he's got like another one, and it's just about those are his outs to like the Dreyth thing that I'm just like slowly but surely looking to set up. Uh, if they had an MST here, <laughs> I'm actually shocked that neither of those back row are MST or um, uh, Dynomicious. It just seems like so Dark Factory Dark War Factory, production yeah. is your card, discard card trooper, but. Happy to just get another free card. Thank you very much, friend. This is not once per turn. Very cool. It's a hard once per turn. Right, right, right. This is what for two? Oh my, oh my good god. That is, wow, that's really something. And wouldn't you know it? It was another fuse uh, line. You I, hit both fuse lines. I put lines. both that's my solidarities unreal. in front of both fuse lines. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Like, certainly. It, it's just, I literally felt like this is going to be the only time I'm ever allowed to do here. this and got punished as hard as possible for it, so. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, well, this is it is now time for the true Draco Momento. He attempted to enter battle phase. Right. And Here's there's laundry. laundry. What do we got? So Ignis Heat, obviously, is going to chain to the laundry, and I don't want to put this one on the field because there is nothing I want it to pop, and I want to have Activate Tribute Summon in my hand. And then this one, uh, the little guys, like, the twos get uh, eights, and the threes get sevens, I believe is how it works. Uh, I thought the twos got sevens. Oh, no, yeah, it, it's uh, three gets eight and two gets seven. So I'm trying to let him get the kitchen on the board, the, the Tink Heck, I guess it's called. Yeah. Rather than Airness. Yeah. All right, well, now we just have to out a monster. And there's my best friend, Dimensional yeah, Fissure. I'm going he's pretty good. <laughs> Dimensional Fissure is, as I mentioned last game, the key to just winning... All the matchups. Card is useless. Monarch thing is just terrible. I cut it a while ago, but not this long ago. Mm -hmm. Nurse is such a big hit here. Oh, and welcome to the Dragon Maid grind. Yep. <laughs> Disciples it's will make it so I never run out of cards, but I, it's why I, like, I didn't just like plop down the D-Fisher. I don't want to lose these three monsters, and there was a significant chance that he just board wipes me here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of the biggest strengths of Dragon Maze, is that they can essentially play you on an infinite game. Uh, they just keep cycling their resources over and over, and it's very hard to run them. You're going to run out of cards long before they... So, I really like that. Can do that. As long as I have three Disciples, I'm not going to run out of cards, ever. Oh yeah, you're, you're, you're fine on the disciples but a lot of decks don't have access to that kind of stuff right yeah um i know when the deck first came out i was comparing it to like salamangrate because it had the same sort of okay i'm doing the the one play every turn it was just xiao instead of like reincarnating a sunlight wolf setting two yeah um so in metas where that's better than reincarnate sunlight wolf set two it is very meow, 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 beans. oh thank you so much for the subscription galactic hat So we obviously, like, my opponent has five in hand, I have six in hand, like, we're on, like, turn six, but I really do just have to find a hole in the armor, but those uh, 2,000 attack boosts make that extraordinarily difficult. Uh, Almirage, obviously it, cutting them to dirt is gonna be helpful, but again, there is still kitchen problems. Tink Heck or whatever. Their, their names are just like shuffled around of the little girl versions. Airness right. instead of Nurse. It's like, he's playing as many cards on my turn as I did on his turn. <laughs> They're on my own okay, turn. Like, wow, let that through. Okay, let that through. Uh, but you can't attack in with the Alu Mirage because that's when they'll fire the Tink. Right. It, what it came down to, it, it's like the old attack with the smallest guy first so you don't get gorsed. I did the attack so that, like, if he kitchens this, then that attack is game. Then that attack is game. Then that attack is game. And he right. smartly held the thing until the last one, and I just didn't let him do it. I just left him on the 100. Right. So, there's a friend. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> so we're we're both just playing like obnoxious big number recycle is what it like I mean, just purely narrows down to. But I was weaponizing this thing to make big number not big number anymore. Oh, and this doesn't. Oh, I see. And this is actually beneficial for them because now they're in a position where just do this. What is that? Yeah, I was not. That. No way. Absolutely not. <laughs> Battle this pack card. free exclusive. I remember this card. I oh. was not ready for that. I thought I had game here. I was laughing, and then... No. <laughs> I feel like, at minimum, you wait until battle phase. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so he was you. he was under the impression it was going to get MST'd by the spell. He, there was no way that thing was making it to the battle phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, get some of my attack points back. Get other sources of attack points back. <laughs> get other sources of attack points back. <laughs> And obviously, finally flush this thing into his banish. This is uh, end of turn or end of combat? Uh, I believe it's end of turn. Ah, uh, it's frustrating. Yep. Oh, believe me, it's excruciating. But uh, this this wouldn't be the NR event if I didn't have to work for every one of my games. It's like I said, like I I would do things where it's like, oh, I've got like 10 minutes to kill, I can hop into a Master Duel game, and no, no, I can't. Oh, yeah. These all um, take like half an hour each. It's horrible. Certainly, I do not like how like the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, every game is like, okay, like, let's just do the access code and wrap this one up. Uh, but <laughs> you, you get a sense that if that were not something you could do, boy, oh boy, <laughs> would things be dire. So there was a point earlier in the match where he was plus eight on me, and now like I'm the one who's plus nine on him. So yeah, was that a uh, nurse no effect? <laughs> He's out of cards. <laughs> you finally right. beat down the grind lord. Yeah, he I ran out of cards before I did. Celestia. Good old disciples. Celestia's the card, man. It is. <laughs> See, you laugh, but uh, Celestia is how I got through my YCS in Toronto back in 2015, 14? It must have been 15. Uh, what were you on? Yang Zing. Uh, oh. Winda still gave you one special summon, so you could crash anything to get Swanee, and it would come out with the 300 boost to 22. Isn't there a 22 Yang Zing already? There wasn't at the time. And then you also had the Banish 3 from the Graveyard to pop a card on the field effect, which was surprisingly relevant. Uh, what is this one? Ah, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I don't remember playing against a Yosenju deck at all. Yeah, Yosenju strange. Um, I think it was like one of the early contenders for best deck. People were like, the entire deck's legal. They have lost literally nothing. Like triple swords, like maybe they lost some extremely targeted trap cards, but you know, you, you pull back into the- um, <laughs> You either win card. or you don't, the chat says. Yeah, That's I guess true. So. I mean, you can uh, draw, just as a heads up. I remember so the the Tribute. And I remember Card Card D, so I think this duel is he goes Card Card D and TTs me, but I don't remember this game. Because mm. I don't well, remember seeing a single use Sentry Monster in any of the duels I played. So this is regardless, like, like that's kind of the Yosenju thing, right? Maybe this was like, whole no, no, duel no, just great. hurt my brain so much that I forgot it happened to protect myself. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is a decent hand. I finally get to go first. Taru, I think is his name. They lost their Omni. I mean, yes, every deck lost their Omni. You know, <laughs> you just you just play Yosen Yosenju like it's 2015, except you also get Sword Sting. All right, so three back. All right, I mean that that's it. So like <laughs> this is the thing with Yosenju is if they draw into the wrong ones, you just like look at them, you know. Oh, Ring. I remember why I saved this replay now. This is, <laughs> I saved this to show it to friends. This is the greatest misplay I've seen since registering for Master Duel. Okay. <laughs> you ready? All right. I'm ready. If your opponent chains true. Draco Warrior, Ignis Heat, to your Ring of Destruction, what do you do? Let it resolve? I mean, it's not fantastic, but... Keep in mind, I have a spell that will let me extra summon it. Extra summon what? The Ignis Heat. Like, uh, there's a guarantee this Ignis Heat can come or... back down. You can see I have the spell. Well, it'll be in Grave, right? We we got the Ring? Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. That's... Um... Well, um... that's ideal. That's. I think that's what you want to be doing in in uh in. I think that's what you want to be doing. I think the cast yeah. the correct way of saying that is that seems suboptimal. <laughs> um, it's actually it is optimal. Uh, they were just playing around the heritage draw. They expected the heritage draw was going to be. Oh wow! Right. This is literally lethal. We are. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! That's. Ah uh, no no that's. I don't like it. 
Now I remember why I didn't know I played against Yosenju. And no Yosenju. <laughs> uh, that's Yosen. I mean, they were like, yeah, this deck's going to be crazy. It has everything. But at the end of the day, it's still Yosenju, right? It was a deck that was struggling to win in 2014. It turns out that any mildly aggressive deck, even true Draco, just eats it alive. Hey, look, I won. So <laughs> apparently I beat Yosenju's. I just never checked what he was on. No, folks, don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't. <laughs> that wasn't even like two for one -ing. that was like even if compulse was a removal spell he self-dustered they were going to spend two cards to trade for a card of yours that searches a spell trap so it was free for you it was two cards for them but because it's a bounce spell uh it, it literally just red lose the game it was wipe my whole board you're welcome he he could see the heritage on the board that said the Ignis Heat was just going to come right back down and pop his Fog Blade too. He traded his three back row for nothing. He just self-dusted uh, to negate his own ring. The self-TK players are getting a lot more creative. You yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> I actually did see self-TK once. He put an Axe of Fools on my Ignis Heat and then summoned a bunch of Hippo Tokens and rammed them into it. Well, that's kind of neat. I It might not have been self-TK. I don't know if you looked at the list, but... I was playing something at the start that was like leeching the light OTK and was like Hippo Token Turbo. <laughs> I mean, he put the Axe of Fools on my monster to give it like a thousand extra attack points. Yeah, if you if you leech the light at Kaiju, it's not lethal. <laughs> so you have to get it slightly larger. I see. And what's this last one? But yeah, chat says it's it's both. You know, if it's an OTK, it's either an OTK or it's a self TK based ah. on if you draw leeching the light. Oh, broken. Yeah. I didn't see this card, but I remember this game. This is this deck seems a, amazing. Like you get all the, so... the benefits of both. You contribute the things for the Draco guys. The Draco guys give you things to pop with the metal foes. Like this is a cool. So deck. between uh, Cosmo and Fa and True Draco, it is not clear what the best splash for foes is. It's probably not Cosmo, uh, but. Definitely TD is in the running just because, I mean, they, there's just so much synergy. I mean, Metal Foe TD was popular back when Gofu was legal, of course. Um, so not surprising that it's good here. Gate Infinity, though. Gate Infinity. What is the purpose of that, I wonder? We're not going to find out, I'm afraid. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I was, I <laughs> it was doesn't come so. up in this game, even though this is the longest game that I have played. Black Belt Sam says, I miss Gofu. I, you know... I miss Gofu too. Uh, having played with him in Chaos Draft, I was like, God, I miss this card so badly. But going Gofu and Hulk is something that I'm really happy we don't get to do. I will say, if you're out there, Maximus X2, shout out to you. You gave me an unbelievably good game. Uh, we both, like, I don't want to say we both played perfectly because I'm not able, capable of judging what perfection is, especially in a format that's this young. But a lot of these turns went really really well i had to think about every play i was making i i have not actually had an opponent that i felt was this competent since joining master duel until he finally makes a misplay and then proceeds to just throw the rest of the game away like every card he plays after that is just a disaster um, that's the that's the classic is you you tilt once and that's just it you're just off yeah he, he just starts throwing everything at the wall like it after playing so crisp, like, I was really impressed by whoever this is, and if they ever find this video, you're awesome, thank you. So he gets to go first, and I see a Metal Foes thing, and I'm like, oh, okay, so it's another buy, because this deck has no problem with Metal Foes, but the first thing he does is do that, and I was like, okay. Whoa, what is that? Trump Witch? Trump Girl. What does Trump Girl do? I literally do not know. It's just the free fusion, right? Yes. That that is exactly. Oh, it has an on destruction effect. Yo, that's crazy. All right, this is all right. I could get behind it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, continue. Uh, I, I do feel like he probably should attribute summoned, but uh, there is a couple of points to this duel where he doesn't seem to understand the value was of that... tribute summoning his Dracos. Sorry, was that um? That was a Pendulum Summoned Ignis they then popped for the Continuous Trap? Yes. Mm, I imagine you would want a Tribute over the Continuous Trap, right? That's the whole point. 
So that's what I was getting at. Was like he doesn't appear to like have the value for his uh, tribute summons. He just seems to treat these as big bodies. This game. Sure. I mean, <laughs> eh, that's that's probably gonna get you pretty far, to be honest. So I'm almost Click yes, positive he did this to make it combo. stop asking him. Yeah. <laughs> like I can appreciate that. Yeah. The uh, the old meme of just click. <laughs> like you just you see the thing pop up and you just click on it. I have seen people ash their own max C's. I can't tell you how many times. Judge, it was orange. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right. Heritage popping the para is good. Uh, well, yeah, I can ooh, see Oh, like... that's neat. Oh, you're, you're tricky, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I showed this replay to a friend of mine. And they're like, wait. Is that still gonna work? I'm like, absolutely. That is yeah. still a tribute summon. Get your rule book from Starter Deck Yu-Gi-Oh. This this ends up coming up, <laughs> and it's really funny. So yeah, he's obviously he still gets to like pop and search, and I knew this was coming. But as long as you can cut the metal foes guys off from the fusion spells, that's usually all it ends up taking. Um, the big threats are all purple. None of the threats are yellow. So uh, frustrating. We'd just be in such a better position if we had been able to stick the heat. <laughs> Myth you're targeting what? The set card? Yeah. Alright, you know. I'm like, that's fine. Oh, it's on. not like Switch I don't the still have the trap. To oh. Now, I wanted to, in his main phase one, use the trap and just summon the Dreyth back. I wanted to do that, and I'm going to in his main phase two. It kept asking, because I had it set to on so that I wouldn't miss the window. And it asked me probably nine times before it finally said he's about to end his battle phase. And I just kept having to look like, is this the one I want to use it? Is this the one I want to use it? Is this the one I want to use it? And I kept being like, no, 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 no. And then I got a phone call on the one that it was actually yes. And I was just like right clicking while talking on the phone and I ended up missing the window. <laughs> so that's 2600 life points I'm not going to get back for no reason. And this should just be his main phase one. Like, it, it just, like, nothing changed except me losing 2,600 life points, which was really annoying. Right, right. This is still kind of a crusty game. Oh, yeah. Oh, that... The combo again, you just click yes, turbo. We gotta do it. You gotta do it. It's not even like you don't give your opponent any information for flipping the combo because they already know where it's set. Right. So, eh. And, like, I'm just going to obviously take his out, but, like, we're just, we both got a Drath now, I suppose. I've got a 2300 defense thing, he's got a 2100 thing, and I'm certainly not going to kill that and give him his zone back for this piece of garbage. And so, no, the quick play, the which I'm surprised I didn't see a lot sooner, if I'm honest. And now he's playing True Draco. <laughs> he can't pick the Maiden. He has to pick the Dreyas. Right. But by activating the Ignis, um, he is going to get Heritage, which means now he has like an MST and like everything just starts to be a problem. My Dreyas floats in a Dreyas. He gets the Pot of Greed. And he's just got cards. Like <laughs> his, his deck. That's interesting. Use. Okay. We know the card in hand, right? Yes, it's, uh, uh, the Parametal Foes, 2,500 defense one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we can even make Myth one. At this point, I look at this board and I'm like, oh, I've got him walled. I just have to chalice my own Majesty Maiden and 27 walls it and 28 walls it. And he activates the True King's Return, uh, True King Heritage to MST. And hits his own card. And I was like, oh, darn. I'm in! I was like, darn, I was really hoping that he was going to hit my chalice and I got to chain it. So he enters battle phase, declares the attack, and I go chalice. And it turns out that this thing says true Draco monster on the field. That's so funny. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So here you go, have 400 attack points, but I've got a second chalice and now this thing doesn't have an effect. That's so funny. <laughs> I cannot believe that you win this one. <laughs> this is looking this is looking rough, I gotta say. And this is the Dreyath lock. This True King's return, like yeah, he gets the maiden search, that's great. 
My maiden doesn't have searches. It was summoned from the graveyard. But I've got the Dreyf lock now. Like, now I'm feeling okay. Because all these Metaphose things, all these pops, they all target. All the bounces target. We just duping out here. Yeah, he's going to get another monster here. But I know his entire hand. I've got perfect information out of what all of his uh, face down cards are. And sure enough, he's just going to get this one out of the way for me. Where are we pulling into? Oracalc? So what end? he just thought the same thing you did. And unfortunately, like I said, he was doing so well up until this point. But he decided to make Ori Kelp and just throw the game away. I... Mm. So I'm going to trade my non-activating one for his activating one. Take out his monster. And I win. This is, the the Dreyath lock is active. He, has, out for this? he can't do anything about the, the Draco cards. They can't be targeted. So um, he's, he's going to give me a search. It doesn't really matter. Parametaphose Fusion has to use this. Was that Trump Girl? Oh, yeah. we're just making mid. Okay. And then uh, Ori Kelly has to pop his own Mithrilium. He can't pick my cards. You still walk into the Dreyaths? So basically, this format comes down to a slightly more advanced Marauding Captain lock. Yeah. That's what you're telling me that. And like, we had Amalgam? What? I don't understand why we're doing that. Oh, this is just... We're just pressing buttons now. Like I said, as soon as he made the Ori Kelk misplay, he just started to crap the bed. Like, he just... Oh. He misplays, like, every one of his cards. Like, that was the 1,000 attack boost to get out of the lock, but he just didn't care, I guess. Yeah, a great book uh, if well. you guys... Uh, struggle from tilting games is the inner game of tennis i've mentioned this before on the stream but it's really good about dealing with your emotional state during games and how to keep it under control if you don't care about tennis like i don't then you don't have to worry about that because the book actually gives you a lot uh, that you can use for card games a player uh, pete ward who's one of the greatest gamers i have ever had the pleasure of meeting like i literally worked on designing Yu-Gi-Oh cards for more than 10 years and he is a better card game player than i will ever be he recommended me the inner game of tennis fantastic book for making sure that that doesn't happen to you and you just tilt like crazy i'd say give it a read it's on audible as well he just he find it one of us had to blink first and he did as soon as he summoned the ori calic i was like oh okay i just got to get all my non-true draco cards off the board and he'll self pop and that'll be it ah man i i don't know i really have to disagree from the outset i I really feel like just um, sort of failing to understand the purpose. Of, I, it's easy to look at Metal Foes and be like, oh, it's a combo deck, because it is a combo deck if you're playing it you know, with certain side engines. Uh, the FA1, I guess I would describe as a combo deck, for instance. Uh, but um, true Draco version, I mean, you have to be trying to outvalue your opponent turn one, and the whole thrust of the deck is that you contribute over your own combination for... Uh, like an Ignis that contests your opponent's lines. And I guess if you just treat them as, like, material to facilitate a combo deck, you're going to end up in a position like that, where, like, yeah, this other player actually, you know, knows what their cards are doing. It has, like, a through line to winning the game, where you're just like, yeah, I mean, we'll just throw enough monsters at it that the game ends eventually. It was just... A I was doing basically the same thing. It was just a lot of trying to get the most value out of each individual card played and using the chalices mm -hmm. and the damage steps so that they don't activate as true Draco cards and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. But there's just... Sooner or later, somebody falls behind and the fusion summon being a minus two only to make him self minus was what I was waiting for as far as the momentum shift was concerned. Right. Uh, Oof. There was a Twitter post not too long ago that compared Yu-Gi-Oh to a sword fight. The first person that breaks loses their life. I mean, yeah, more or less. Like, but, uh, unless... Th there's there's two kinds of Yu-Gi-Oh games. There's the one that you do play and the one that you don't. And what you're talking about is true of the one that, like, you do play. But there's an awful lot of games that are decided by, like, the end phase of the starting player. Uh, I I've always felt that... The person going second should also not draw for turn and just start on six cards because it would probably save Another everyone like 15 minutes. 
Oh, that's oh. So you could be like, okay, I'm scooping early. Yeah, like as soon as your opponent puts down like the Helka Fyrax, you know your next card's not Sphere Mode. Just go to game two. Like you, you can already see it. I don't hey, know. I, I, I feel like the the concept of Yu-Gi-Oh is like fencing match or whatever, where like uh, the first person to kind of uh, crack loses. Uh, sort of gives uh, momentum in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, way, way too much uh, power. Uh, there have been a lot of games where I've been, like, just straight losing, and my opponent will, like in this game, make a misplay, which causes them to make, like, further misplays as they go further and further on tilt. Oh, yeah. And then if they weasel themselves into a losing position, even if they are still massively favored in the matchup, they can really easily get into a position where they just, like, are losing. Like, I, I think much more important than, like... Um, avoiding any misplays in game is the ability to like misplay and then be like oh it happens <laughs> like let's uh let's yeah. play perfect from here on out um i mean you you i'm sure everyone here has a, a um a story about a time that their opponent did some stuff and they realized after they had added two cards to their hand that you were holding a droll and lockbird and you just refused to activate it for the rest of the turn so you didn't look stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've actually had the opposite. I've had someone who Droll and Lockbirded me in response to their own Max C. That's epic. That was the, that was the play in, a, in, what was it, 2016 Nats format. If you played against a Synchro Fusionist player, you would Max C them. They would draw you your whole deck to try and kill you. And then you go, all right, last card, Droll. Yeah. <laughs> That was yeah, okay, uh, no, one of my Luna Light games from a few streams ago. Uh, Luna Light player under Max C got me down to about six cards before I had the droll. Ugh. Ugh, I do not like Luna Light Tiger. That's a, a thing you'll learn about the Climb podcast here. It was my most hated card in the entire card pool. It just everything about it is wrong to me. Oh, I can promise you there's no Luna Lights in any of my replays. And I'm really <laughs> looking forward to this next part. So, unlike you guys, I decided to go with a completely different challenge. Uh, I created a brand new account and decided to take it from Rookie to Platinum 1, and ultimately I ended up choosing a Winged Dragon of Ra deck, and I did get it to Plat 1 in six days. Oh my god. It was painful, but I did it. And it plays all of the new Poker Knight cards. Behold. So the, yeah, this is the this is that. Call it Royal Flush. Uh, so these cards have a surprisingly large amount of synergy uh, with it that I really liked with That Grass. Uh, that Grass Looks Greener works so well with all of the new Poker Knight cards, which gives you the option to shuffle cards back into your deck during your end phase to add back things like Joker Straight, uh, or Joker's Wild, or even the uh, Joker Monster card. So you can put a lot of your resources back into the deck and essentially you can spam the field with three monsters every turn. Which is funny enough, the exact tribute requirements for the Winged Dragon of Ra to kill you. Uh, this card uh, is it's quite difficult. Originally this deck started off as a Slifer deck, that was awful. Uh, went Obelisk slightly better, and then in the end I went Winged Dragon of Ra. It started off as 40 cards, and I just didn't have enough space to play all the things I wanted to because the Knights were taking up uh, a lot of the spaces. And I was getting really frustrated that I'd draw hands that had like a pair of Jacks, which funny enough, in poker is a pretty good hand. In Yu-Gi-Oh it is Awful. God awful. You draw two jacks. <laughs> uh, so that's when I decided, whoa, I need to I need to get this deck on a bulking diet and take it up to 60 cards uh, so that I have room to play everything and decrease the chances that I draw multiples of these knights in my hand. So I will we'll call out the elephant in the room. I play 13 card extra deck because we've all lost to DD Dynamite and Banquet Millions. And quite honestly, that deck can go die in a fire. Uh, so I play 13 cards so they can't OTK you. I had a bunch of players just concede as soon as we start, and I'm like, oh, you're yeah. on the Banquet deck, aren't you? They're bots, <laughs> so I yeah. I 13 cards. But they're literally bots that are programmed to scoop. If they, they check your extra deck count, and if it doesn't say 15, they scoop. Oh, they've got bots playing that deck at the moment. They've got bots yeah. playing two different decks, and hilariously, they play against each other. <laughs> and one of them has now switched to also playing a 13-card deck because it makes the other bot scoop. That's that exceptionally is, funny. That is really funny. I didn't I didn't realize there were bots that were doing that. Uh, so this deck isn't 100% perfect. There are a couple of changes. So the hand traps feel a little bit all over the place. Uh, I will go with the Drawn Lockbirds are super strong against Drytron. I absolutely despise Drytron. If I had a... Hang on one second. Let's see. Just these. Sorry about that, guys. 
Welcome back. So, if I've got a... If you ever watched the Final Fantasy Spirits Within movie, the big satellite cannon, the Zeus cannon, which admittedly made the problem a lot worse in the movie, I would use it to destroy Drytron, because I absolutely despise that deck. But Droll Lockbird is very, very good against it if they don't Herald of the Orange Light you. There's a bunch of decks where their turn just ends if you hit them with a Droll Lockbird, and it doesn't get uh, hit with Ash Blossom like a Max C. I actually only took Max C down to a 1 quite late, so I could include it uh, to take advantage of my Cross Act Designator. Uh, I also Max C, sometimes it works, but a lot of the time it's just getting Ash Blossom, which... You no, know, it's pro in your deck because you want to resolve Joker straight, but it was still kind of frustrating every time you try and go for a maxi and find that you're giving that Ash Blossom. More cards? Sorry, hang on. Honestly, you, you've said elephant in the room, and I just okay. can't take my eyes off of this card. Wolf. Yeah, Wolf, when you uh, when, when this card gets sent to the graveyard, it's just free material. Ultimately, I'd probably cut these two. Uh, they were in an earlier... They were in the earliest version of the build when I had uh, Charge of the Light Brigade, had three copies in there and a Raiden. The really cool thing about Raiden is you can put him back in the deck with Joker Straight or any of your Night Guard, any of all your other Charge of the Light Brigades, but it ended up being subpar. Anytime I did get a Wolf with the that grass looks greener was a very strong position. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, this deck is very, very good at sneaking a uh, Star Leech Dynamo uh, Ptolemyus, I think is his name. It's the third extra deck. Oh, Star Leech Paladin, yeah. Yeah, and then you make a Utopia double, and you can just run over anything for 10k. You can also use the Wing Dragon Ara to... uh, because you're quite comfortably putting out two uh, rank two level fours to make it. Because the Knights, uh, the Joker Straight gives you the two level fours and gives you the extra level five, which you can do something else with. But you can just attach the two materials, make that guy zero, and then your Utopia double just kills them. I am really excited for this. This deck looks oh, so sick. Yeah. Also, uh, in the in the monsters of perform ages, I was playing the ha the flame eater, which you actually see come into play. Uh, this card's actually super clutch for my favorite card in the entire deck, which is the guardian slime, right next to the wing dragon raw. Essentially, just when it's summoned, it deals five hundred damage to each player. Also, it stops you getting burned because you can use its effect where if you take burn damage, you can special summon it and stop that. Which is very good again when people are playing DD Dynamite, uh, being able to just break their souls just a little bit was very, very <laughs> important. But uh, the Guardian Slime on its own is an OTK. Well, I say it on its own, but you have to play other cards in your deck. But if you resolve right. this card, uh, essentially you can discard it or when it's sent to the graveyard, you search your deck for any card that mentions the Winged Dragon of Ra. We get Ancient Chant. Ancient Chant then lets us get Winged Dragon of Ra from our deck or graveyard, which means we can get it out if we grass, which means we only have to play one Ra. And then we can banish this from our graveyard to then mean when we tribute summon, Ra gains the effect where it gains the attack of every other monster that was tributed. So this means that you can send the Guardian Slime to the graveyard for Ancient Egyptian God Slime. Mm -hmm. uh, that will then trigger the effect to search for Ancient Chant, Ancient Chant, banish the Ancient Chant, tribute the Ancient God Slime. You get a 10,900 attack Winged Dragon of Ra, which has a kill potential over anything with sub 2,900 attack in attack mode which quite a lot of monsters have that. So you've got a lot of ways of just sniping games. I'll, I'll do a proper deck profile for this when we do a feature week. Uh, next week for our, our YouTube channel, we've got a feature week for the Utopia deck that I covered in our previous cast. And we go over all the full combos, full deck guide. I'll do the same with the Ra deck, but I want to jump into the replays because they are so much fun. And I'm so glad that I managed to get this deck uh, up to max. Oh yeah, and this is the Utopia deck from last week. <laughs> So these replays are under Matorgus 4. 4, yeah. Yes. Uh, if you want to know what happened to Matorgus 2 and 3, it was a Slifer and Obelisk deck that did not get there. So I <laughs> ended up we start in silver and work our way up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, start from the bottom. You will see some cards that I didn't play in the deck being played in some of these replays as I refine the deck as we go up, but uh, I'll call them out when we see them. I like that you, they're also timestamps, so you can see that you were quite literally in silver only four days ago. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's actually pretty cool. So, dual one oh, is against Eldless. Oh yeah, yeah, this this hand is pretty good here. Although I'm still getting used to the deck. Oh. So never mind. Actually, the hand is terrible. <laughs> I haven't seen grass in years, and I was so excited, and then Ash immediately just like put me back in my little corner. I'm sad again. 
That happens a lot when you play this deck. Uh, the Ash Blossom immediately is like, no, you are not for Aslix Freeman. Easy. And did you just mill wolf. wolf off treasure yeah. like in a 60 card deck? Yeah, I did. Easy. I'm that good at this game. Yeah, okay. I'm thinking that like someone left a little bit of coding in before he left the company to cheat on an <laughs> account with my tour against him. I had absolutely nothing to do with Master Duel, which is the only reason that I'm allowed to turn on a <laughs> my NDA is very clear that I'm not allowed to talk about anything else. Uh, and yeah, so essentially we go for a Minerva line. I get the Flame Eater because, like I mentioned before, I can normal summon that, and that lets me special summon the Guardian Sign from my hand, and then I can OTK from there. And of course, all the cards I sent to the graveyard, I can then use my uh, Joker's Knight to put resources back into my deck to add them to my hand, which means that my follow-up turns, I have that infinite value to essentially play with it. It occurs to me how good these Joker cards actually are with Grass Looks Greener, and then it immediately after that occurred to me that that's impossible to do anywhere in the world on paper, because the TCG doesn't have Grass and the OCG doesn't have the poker cards. Yeah, this is a Master Duel exclusive deck, if you're looking Ooh. to have fun with this. Alright, well, there's Lich. <laughs> An anti-spell fragrance. That was a pot for three. You gotta keep the extra deck for uh, Lich, I suppose. And he, the first card he revealed with it was another one. <laughs> oh, they are really in on this, huh? But in defense mode, mind you. Didn't want to go to battle here. Yeah, well, this is still a silver game, uh, to be fair. Well, I guess you're under prosperity, you know? It's not like you yeah, can do any shenanigans to kill you with a, a large gun. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Joker's Wild is very strong. So Secretly, this card he was playing our Mirror Force, you see. This is true. Uh, so essentially, Joker's Wild lets you send any of the uh, oh Joker's gosh. cards to the graveyard. That's actually perfect. That is him throwing that Ash out to stop me getting a Jack's Knight, which does Jack, and I'll leave the sentence there because I don't want to get the channel flag, is really cool. So now, whenever you take damage, you can special summon the Guardian Slime. And then I get my Joker straight back, so I've got full access to killing my opponent next turn. Oh, I am so excited. Wow, these cards are crazy! Yeah, they're designed to work with Slifer and get his attack points nice and big, but... Uh, I remember... Better with Roth. Ooh, easy. I remember yeah, um, Roth. seeing like their application with Slifer and being like, Oh, Slifer is like a floodgate, this is really good, but in practice, boy, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, Slifer just unfortunately doesn't do enough, and too many decks can just special summon defense mode. It just becomes a liability. Blaze Cannon! <laughs> wow, we are playing the uh, Pyro support. Let's go. Yeah, the the Blaze Cannon was... This is like one of the earlier builds where I was playing multiple run. That is a Royal Raw as well. Mm -hmm. That's the... I would have re-rolled this account because I didn't quite get all the cards I needed when I wanted to open the packs, but when one of them was a Royal Raw, I was like, all right, fine. That's the whole point of this series. Uh, yeah, and then I can just Blaze Cannon. No I shot. don't need this it. Is... Oh no. Oh. Just over. <laughs> and you can just pull lethal out so many ways in this deck. Uh, it, it, that it's actually crazy. That's a glossy second raw as well. Oh yeah, it's, there's a royal rare uh, sphere mode in there as well. <laughs> That's incredible. I got quite lucky for this uh, for this series. So if you want to roll the next one, the next one is against Attic Mister. Uh, unfortunately, I am going to have to bounce here. Yeah, oh, I... no worries. <laughs> I was just uh, thank you all so much for having here. me. Uh, this was this was a blast. Yeah, no, cheers, uh, cheers, MBT. We're glad to have you on. Uh, look forward to working with you in the future when you have time. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And of course, you guys, he has his own channel, uh, MBT Yu-Gi-Oh. Please do go check that out. There will be links to it in the description of all of the replay videos. All of his Metal Foes ones, all of my True Draco ones, and definitely that Silver Raw one that we just played. Uh, thank you very much for finding the time for us. I really appreciate it, and I hope that maybe we can have you on again someday. No, oh, for sure. Yeah, hit me up whenever. Bye-bye. Awesome. Catch you in a bit. Let's go okay, you back for... in the corner now. Right there. For everybody else here... We are going to go through the rest of these raw games and have a whole bunch of fun at everyone else's expense. So we're going to start with our Chinese friend. No, this Korean. This Korean. Circle. Yes. That's my little mental shortcut. Only Korean has circles. 
Yes, because apparently the language tells you how you're supposed to move your mouth to say it. But I don't speak Korean, so I don't take my word for that. Alright, so this hand, uh, it has Joker Stray and Ancient Chance. So it'll, it can kill an opponent if I find a window. So do you just pass uh, but I'm going through them? Or? No, no, no I'm going first. Or? So this is a really cool play that you get to make in this deck. Is This looks suboptimal, what I actually do here. But I am playing the, I think it's called Thunder Force Summon in this version of the deck. Ah, so Thunder, the... Choke is Wild and Thunder Speed, okay. Yeah, Thunder Speed, sorry, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, wow, well, you know exactly what to do against this opponent. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite familiar with Attic Nistos at this stage. Uh, if you guys have not actually checked out our YouTube channel, I have a whole series which does a complete combo guide on how to play the Attic Nistos, all the way from beginner to, to master level. Uh, go check it out if you want to play Attic Nistos. It's a fantastic deck. It is still my favorite deck that I played on the, the ladder from these... Uh, the climb series that we've been doing. But this one was also a lot of fun. Okay, so we go ahead and let our opponent commit a whole bunch of resources. I've got Nibiru, but I've also got a secret Nibiru my opponent is never going to see coming. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and let him ladder all the way up and try and get as many of his resources into a into where he's going. Because I don't actually think my opponent is going to go for at a rival combo, but then he switches in the middle and I'm like, you've not gone first, why have you gone for a rival? Yeah, uh, I, I normally wait until there's a threat of update jammer because I don't want to put the update in the graveyard, but, like, I, I mean, how do you just not Nibiru him, like, as soon as Templar resolves, right? Yeah, exactly, like, I don't, but the, here's the thing, like, you've got such a high kill potential uh, with this, like, even through Nibiru, there's no reason to be playing, uh, going for a rival at Mister in this situation, you should be trying to kill me. Right. I'm just, like, as far as, like, when to nib, like, normally you nib them just before you see Update Jammer so you don't die to the follow-up, but... Yeah. So, yeah, this is, uh... Oh, my God! But you contribute your opponent's monsters to summon that! <laughs> so, yeah, my opponent goes ahead and links that. You never get the Sphere Mode back. It's one of the reasons that ultimately ended getting cut. There is a Link monster, the Generator, that lets you swap control of monsters, which I tried out for a little while, but... The opponent always linking away the sphere was kind of a big deal, which is why I ended up not doing that. So yeah, I get to fight in the beer. I've got my opponent's Transco Talker now. I'm surprised you didn't and wait I mean, for the access to hit the board. Uh, that would have made more sense. But here's here's something that really jams me on this game. My opponent has the call by the grave to stop me getting my Joker straight back. So I literally had the opportunity to OTK my opponent. But then he maxis, so I'm thinking, was he a genius? And he saw me coming and he was going to stop me getting my Joker straight. But then he plays a max C and I'm confused. So I can't actually OTK next turn. And my opponent has a 9600 attack. Rock token. Why did he max C you for nothing? I don't know. I thought he was, I thought he already knew what I was trying to do. Um, which is why he held the call by the grave and didn't set it. Because in almost every other situation, you call called by the grave to interact on my turn. And he chose not to do that. So now I've just got to not die here. Uh, my opponent can make quite a lot of resources into their arrival. I've got a max C uh, to try discourage my opponent trying to go for a game. And he knows I play Nibiru, you know, so there's a bit of a fear about whether or not my opponent goes all in on this. So I'm going to take a huge hit. And then I've got the Guardian Slime to make sure I can block an attack. Guardian Slime has another effect where the first time it gets attacked, you can make your defense match their attack. So it doesn't die, but it's once per turn. It's kind of a weird hand trap that stops you from dying in battle. And of course, I can summon three knights in my opponent's turn. Which then means I've got lethal. You wouldn't believe it with only 1400 life points, but it turns out that uh, Blaze Cannon and the Winged Dragon of Ra is good enough. Blaze, uh, yeah, the Blaze Cannon. Unfortunately, the Blaze Cannon did get cut from the final version of the deck because it was it felt win more unless you're in exactly this situation. I see. That makes sense. Yeah, so... Now, uh, Blaze Cannon makes my Winged Dragon of Rot unaffected by everything, and I contribute any monsters that haven't attacked to add their attack, and I get him for 8-5, straight over his guy. Gross. Oh yeah, it's it feels so satisfying. You get a lot of players that concede because they don't want to be the person who lost to Ra on the rank lap. All right, if you want to wow. go home. I'm just wow. I'm I'm thinking like, would I play the Blaze Cannon or not? Because I feel like there's going to be a lot of games that you 
don't have the life points to pay like that your opponent does get a window to like hate so, you yeah the trick to those games is that you go for the utopia double nothing uh, okay, instead yeah. of having double or nothing and, you don't need the brick anymore yeah yeah well you still have to play the brick that is double or nothing but you get to take a lot of that load out of your deck into your extra deck yes black belt sam i feel like you should build this deck it was completely free to play it took me a little bit longer because i didn't re-roll the account because i got a royal ra but uh, yeah, it's completely doable on a brand new account. You just do the tu you do the um, tutorial, and then you just use all of your gems to <laughs> buy the pack. Dragon. Oh, maids. dragon maids. And you opened yeah. your brick and a vanilla. Yeah, so this is not ideal. But and he the good opened news is really good. Wow. Okay. But the good news is I have a way of flushing his uh, monster negation. Gets a dragon in the graveyard. Yeah. So my goal here is to flush negation and then try and find a way to resolve that grass looks greener. Mm. Well, left arm offering is certainly not how you flush the negation, but Snow is a pretty good Yu Gi Oh card. Snow is a card that's absolutely insane and completely unfair, and it's allowed it. I almost called that card yep. Hotel Dragon Maid. <laughs> wow, here we go. Really? Yeah, Just so... the one chain link? You didn't get like six or seven things? Oh. So this is one of the problems with the night deck. Like, you could probably make this way more efficient playing uh, zombies. But at the same time, the Joker's Knights cards do let you do some stuff. Uh, give you the access to like the infinite game plan. Gotta love when you mill the other two grass. That's nice. Oh yeah, that's always that's always fun to see. So my win condition right here is I know I can attack over the free fires and attack monster, and I don't want those dragons turning into stuff that cause me trouble in the battle phase. So now I'm just trying to look to shut off these dragons, and my opponent's going to go ahead and try and scoop me out. He had the tidy, and if only he had made a sphere mode. Oh well. You're not a sphere mode, a, he a heavenly sphere. So you got the serve for the chamber discard yep yep left arm on and now monster reborn becomes a one card otk well it's not yeah because you got the guardian up. slime yeah guardian slime and then we can go for rock snow is kind of good is a bit of an understatement there uh <laughs> <laughs> i think he was and... quoting me because I, I was like snow is kind of good it's kind of good yeah card. it's kind of a good Yu-Gi-Oh card and ultimately uh, again, you get to summon the Winged Dragon and Raw because of Monster Reborn, so you get to feel like Mark, you get to do your laugh, where you're like, Aah! you know, or whatever his laugh was. Uh, and slam, and 6 9, and we've got 1600 for game. <sighs> Victory by Raw Dog. Right. The deck, actually, for people that are interested in the, the real stats, because the deck was changing as I was going up for the rain, uh, the rankings, I had about 65% win rate. I got a lot higher when I got the deck more and more refined, but it did go, it did get, you can get to plat one on 65 quite comfortably. I mean, it only took, it took less than a week. You just like, oh, that was turn two. You like effectively, oh, like FTK them. That was your first turn. Oh, this deck can do that a lot. Uh, I didn't save a whole bunch of games that just ended when I killed them. One of the problems I have with this deck is going first is actually really difficult uh, because it's not really... When you play Joker straight, it locks you into light warrior monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. And you don't really want to put Utopia in defense mode. Oh, welcome uh, so to the you... stream, Two Tone Taren. Sorry, I didn't notice. We had a, another new viewer. Welcome. Oh, yeah, welcome, man. Huh? All right, you got Soul Crossing. I know that you've been a pretty big champion of this card. Oh, this card is a card that I think is absolutely nuts. Uh, ultimately, uh, it got cut from the deck because I was just able to do such ridiculous nonsense with Ra anyway. But having a way to tribute your opponent's entire field and then swing with a Ra with over, with over 12,000 attack seems pretty tempting. Uh, you can also do tricks with this in this version because I have the sphere mode where you can tribute your opponent's field. Summon Ra sphere mode to your side of the field. It can't be targeted or attacked, so your opponent basically ends up passing. And then you can just go ahead and turn it into um, 
Well, into Ra. <laughs> what, no wolf this time? <laughs> no, ultimately this uh, Lightspawn engine got slimmed right down. Uh, I probably would cut the wolves if I went ahead and did this again, but since this is what ended up in the final build, we'll show it to you guys here. Uh, so this is kind of a really weak start, but I have got Maxi and I have got Kaiju. Kind of playing Cyber Dragon. No, Cyber Dragon. I guess you pulled the Royal Rare Cyber Dragon core and you think, why not? I like Cyber Dragons, and I would do a deck profile for them. I would do a future week for Cyber Dragon, but like so many, they're so popular, so many other creators have already done it. It kind of feels like, I want to find something a little bit more unique, and Ra was something sitting at the top of that list. Uh, if you want to look for a great uh, light warrior archetype, the Utopia deck I played last week can fully abuse the Joker straight card. Yeah, that does sound pretty tempting, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it gives Is you that, that a ZS Sage board. thing, the really broken one? Is that a warrior or a spellcaster? The, which one, sorry? The Sage? Yeah. Uh, I think he's a warrior. Because, like, you so win I the think... game if you search for that card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can literally summon, uh, summon two, get the level five. The only problem is you get locked into Exe summons, and then the five kind of ends up a little bit dead for you. But you could potentially uh, go to Constellar Pelides. Uh, in that deck, so you'd have your whole setup filled and a Constellar Pelides, and you know that that feels basically impossible to play through as it stands. Called by the Grave on Cyber Dragon. That's just yeah, we don't want to. Yeah, and then he's going to go for Infinity. <laughs> Another Grass. Yep, and at this point, I do. I've got the Soul. Soul transition in my hand, so soul crossing in my hand. Sorry, so I want to get this uh, Guardian Sun destroyed so I can go ahead and get my search card for Wing Dragon of Ra. Yeah, that does seem pretty good. Yeah, so we can go ahead and open this turn with uh, Joker straight. Oh, Kaiju, uh, and then opponent Maxis. This is fine, I'm completely fine with this because for the most part, I'm going to be normal summoning. Yeah, so we can just go ahead and normal summon that, not special summons, the nine my opponent the extra draw from Maxi. Go ahead and get our Wing Dragon of Ra. Banish the Ancient Champ from the Graveyard. Opponent's gonna chain the Salaman Great, thinking, aha, I've got you. We've got snow in the graveyard, so we just go ahead and pull that up and then there's three monsters. Oh, again. that's awesome. I was thinking of a sudden like, what is your backup plan there? And then oh my god, the snow is so good. Yeah, Snow being an insane Yu-Gi-Oh card, and then Wing Dragon Raw gains the attack distributed, and we swing for 10k. I feel like that's how all of these are gonna end, and we swing for 10k. Uh, yeah, you yeah, basically, like I always feel like that guy type Park is like, with you bite your money, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what you're doing to your opponents. Shiratama. Yeah, please do, please do if you want to copy the deck. Uh, and like I said, I'll do a full profile uh, feature week for Ra. It won't be next week because that's Utopia week on our channel. And then the week after, we'll just have some duels being played. And then the week after, that will be Ra week. Uh, so, but, like, we'll show you the deck at the end of this so you can take a screenshot and steal it early since you guys are supporting us on Twitch. So this hand is uh, really good. Unfortunately, I'm going first and I don't want to go first. This deck is built to Excel's going second. This is versus Trap Tricks. Ah, okay, so this uh, this game I go for uh, a lockout start using Crusadia Evermax because I feel like that card's very hard to deal with. Uh, for most decks. So this would be IP then. Oh, no, Minerva. Yeah, ideally... Yeah, well, oh, I've got, you're just like... milling more cards for Snow. That makes sense. Yeah, now you get Masquerina. Yeah, I'd probably, if I was going to play the extra extra deck card, Unicorn would definitely be in here. Uh, I ran out of Ultra Rare Gems, and again, because I was trying to do this free to play. It was, uh... Oh. Yeah, so I can go ahead and Abyss Dweller, and then I can make uh, Crusader Evermax. And then I've got my full next turn play lined up, because I can add back Joker straight. Trap Tricks Mantis, Chain Dweller... I guess these are some from the extra deck. That's cute. 
Yeah, so I actually think that I did this quite early because I I do a quick run through in my head and I don't think the Trapper deck can answer this in any way. Not once it's already on the board. It's pretty hard for them. They can do it, and I do find out in this game. And it's why when I sort of go back and think about if I did this deck differently, if I'd include the Avermax line at all, it is very good when your opponent makes you go first, but you need to be able to do two level four summons on your first turn, and then play Joker straight, because you can't special summon IP Masquerina after you play Joker straight. Uh, so it's a little bit awkward, and it kind of forces you to build your deck uh, a little bit uh, differently in order to mm. do this consistently. And in the end, I just decided going first, going second as often as possible, and using Wing Dragon or rather win game was way more effective than trying to set this play up. And yeah, hoping it was enough to carry me there. So Rafflesia, Ecclesia. Yeah, so that card can answer your Crusadia Avermax. Fleur de Lee? Oh yeah, it can. Doesn't Avermax gain attack? Uh, not when it's negated, and the negation isn't targeting. Ah. Uh... So they can slam into each other. Uh, so it's not a sure thing when you do this. Uh, but the Avermax against a lot of other matchups is going to be enough for you to uh, win the game, because most people just can't get I honestly did not know that it was non-targeting. Well, you got uh, a nice Duster in this matchup, of all places. Yeah, Duster's, Duster's pretty good in this matchup. Unfortunately, I do not have access to a ancient chant, otherwise I would be OTKing here. Opponent's going quite heavy on the Gravedigger's uh, Ghouls. Sorry, not Gravedigger's Ghoul, that card is terrible. Uh, the Gravedigger's Trap Hole. <laughs> Gravedigger, Gravedigger Ghoul, if I was losing games to that, I should probably hang up my Yu-Gi-Oh hat and be like, yep, now this is uh, me done for the day. Yeah, so I can just run my opponent over with three knights because all of my guys are bigger than his. I'm just seeing that you just like let him keep the Sarah. No, no, I didn't because I've got snow as well. Ah, okay. Baguska? No. No, you you can't do that. If you play Joker straight, it doesn't fit in the stack, unfortunately. Oh. And another problem with this is that if you add the, oh yeah, this is when I was playing the Imperial Blower. Imperial Blow is great if you want to go first in most games. It ultimately ended up getting cut from a large part from this deck because I did not want to go first. I understand. And that's where you, if you want to go Crusadia Evermax, Imperial Blow is great. It also burns for your resources very quickly. Like this Joker Straight deck, you really need to know uh, how to balance your graveyard resources to shuffle the knights back into the deck correctly. Uh, you need to have a uh, Queen always goes back first, then King, then Jack. But you need to. Try and make sure you have all three in the deck, uh, because you need at least a queen and one of the other two in order to resolve Joker straight. Uh, but there's always a temptation, for example, to put the Utopia or the extra deck monsters that you only play one copy of back in the extra deck, because uh, because it's basically a free way of cycling those. Uh, so you then look for Imperial Order. Okay, you then look for discard materials so that you can set it up so that you return two cards to get two cards back. Uh, even though you're only resolving uh, Joker straight and discarding the Joker as well. So yeah, opponent is going to go ahead and Grave Digger. They fought really hard in this, right? So yeah, they go ahead and negate that and I can just go ahead and run my opponent over again. They've got an Imperial Order up as well. <laughs> so I don't really have much to worry about. And a cool thing about this deck and Imperial Order, despite the fact that Imperial Order is a ridiculous card, and it shouldn't be legal in Master Duel. They're gonna be on 50 life points if you starve them out with Imperial Order. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, is that you can still play the Joker straight. And now I've got Tornado Dragon, so I can turn off that Imperial Order whenever I want. Choose not to because I actually want the Joker straight to shuffle the card back into my deck. Uh, so I can add it back to my hand. That's the reason I play it there. Oh, that's kind of cool. because I want to resolve it. I was expecting like chain tornado dragon shenanigans, but that was nice. No, 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 no. It's like yeah, I just I wanted to put resource back in my because I essentially profited one in the deck there uh, because I didn't take anything out of the deck to resolve that. And those are the kind of tricks that you need to learn to play with this deck. Is how can I cheat resources back into my deck? Uh, because every time you play Joker straight, 
uh, and discard a another one of the Joker cards, you end up with a negative one in your deck. Have you ever watched the movie Bringing Down the House or read the book uh, Bringing Down the House? Sorry, it's called 21, the movie. It was awful compared to the book. Uh, Bringing Down the House by Ben Meserick. Fantastic book about how some MIT students learn to card count. Kind of doing that with this deck because when you play Joker straight, you take three cards out of your deck. But uh, if you discard, say, Joker's Wild to play Joker straight, in the end phase, you only shuffle two of those cards back in the deck. Your decks end up negative one resource, so eventually you'll run out. So you want to find ways to cheat extra resources back in your deck. And it's actually really flavorful, and I don't know if it was intentional on Konami's part, but uh, I, I do really <laughs> like that I feel like I'm playing real poker in a casino. Alrighty, well, let's move on to our game against uh, OCG play. Isan. Isan Traizu he's playing. Sorry, uh, I said the Traizu in Japanese accent, I didn't mean to. Uh, it's a Tri Brigade Zodiac deck. His name is Isen. Isen, sorry. Yep, uh, so opponent's gonna go ahead. I've got absolutely no interaction. Basically, figure out what the opponent has and then deal with it. Yep, just got a card, special summon Karis. Now, does he go for four or two? He goes for two. See, this is good. I I can respect and understand this, and yet every one I go against lately has been just banishing four, and I'm like, okay, I'm pairing my win. Yeah. Like, why don't you go for this thing first, and then the Appaloosa after it? I don't get, like... So Appaloosa is actually a bit of a pain to deal with in this Yeah, and then game, you set like... Revolt, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's when a very I first good le learned about, like, the Tri-Brigade Zodiac deck, I was told... Yeah, it makes Appaloosa and Ancient Warrior's Oath, and then after the new set, it will also set Revolt and become, like, a real deck. And I was like, okay, sure. So this is what I expected every end board to look like. It has never happened to me before. They always, like, banish four, like, right away, and they end up not having this guy or something, and, like, they end up with, like, the Silver Sharp or whatever his name is. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, there's a bit of a learning curve. I'd recommend any player who wants to do that for who play Tribe Against Zodiac because it's good against just about everything. Well, it has a good matchup against just about everything. It doesn't have like any horrendous matchups that I'm aware of. So those are monster negates, so grass is just happening. Yep. And there goes the first of three Appaloosa juices. Yeah, so I essentially need to burn down the Appaloosa and then the Appaloosa can libel opponent because zero attack monsters when I'm trying to swing for the fences yeah. is exactly what I want to see. So if you were going to play Tri Brigade Zoo, would you play Moon Mirror Shield? Moon Mirror Shield, the equip spell that always means you're 100 attack over them. Yeah, because Appaloosa is. It's changing its original attack, right? So if it got down even all the way to 0 and then you just swung with it, Moon Mirror Shield would make it, in this case, 12, and then after it resolved, it would go back to being 24 and have 3 negates again. I mean, that would be great, but then you got to play Moon Mirror Shield in. Uh. And there's a lot of situations where Moon Mirror Shield isn't so good. So in this case, I want to banish the... Oh, I forget that card's name. Uh, Nerville. Yeah, the I want to banish the Nerville because it keeps my opponent from getting additional resources in their turn. It doesn't stop the tri -Brigade Revolt from resolving. In fact, he just gets it back and puts it in the graveyard, but then it means my opponent's not going to be able to search their deck for a card. So I've only really got to answer what my opponent's got in play. Yeah, there's also next turn, they won't be able to use Nerval either. Called by the Grave is a very, very, very good card. Yeah, called, called by the Grave. Weirdly enough, you cannot resolve it when you try and resolve the left arm offering because you have to banish a hand as a cost, <laughs> uh, which is one of the reasons that cross Eye Designator, you can preemptively play it on Ash Blossom uh, before you banish a hand, but a bit, of a, a bit of a tricky one. Called by the Grave has a lot of application. So in a lot of matchups. So yeah, at this point, I can now make sure my snow sticks. My opponent makes me banish extra cards for it, but that's fine. I know I have got lethal on the next turn, depending on what my opponent's draw is. And I can refresh my graveyard as well with a Minerva, so that my snow is super healthy. Yeah, I feel like no matter what he summons, you call by the grave the same card out of his graveyard, and he can't banish to Link, and he's just got a 3,000 vanilla in play. Yeah, essentially, and he's got a zero type monster that I can beat over to win. Uh, I can even Utopia double that as well. I can't remember if I sent the, Utop the double or nothing from my deck to the river with grass. But either way, 
I've got access to a raw kill next turn. Yeah, and I've got I've got caught by the grave, so there's no way that miracle's ever gonna work. If, if it was even gonna be a thing. Yeah, it's just gonna be about getting the guardian slime in play. No, it's not. You just discard it, and then you get the effect. Oh, wow, Joker Strait is really good. <laughs> yeah, Joker Strait is a really good card. Uh, this deck, that... it is obnoxious. That is crazy. And then you can chain block to hide the Guardian Slime underneath the King's Knight. So instead of getting a Jack's Knight at deck the Ash Blossom, uh, well, basically the Ash Blossom would stop me getting a Jack's Knight, but I can now go ahead and Ancient Chant, uh, get the Wrath out of the graveyard. He just scoops and it up, yeah. That opponent just goes, no, I am not I am not going to be the guy who gets caught live stream losing Rock. That uh, is Wouldn't fantastic. ever happen. Wouldn't ever happen, mate. Would never do that to you. <laughs> uh, next opponent is Ghost playing Mythical Beast. Top eight. And uh, yeah, chat, if you've got any like questions or anything about this deck, by all means, shoot them in there. I'll be quite happy to get the deck list up once we're done with the release. Uh, and I'll walk you through everything you need to know uh, if you want to give this one a spin. But it is a whole lot of fun to play when it goes off. You feel absolutely amazing Ooh. playing a good card in a deck that's Oh, <laughs> this opening. Wow. Yeah, this, this opening is what I like to call the perfect opening. And now you're going to see where the Perform Age Flame Eater really comes. Yeah, your opponent opened so good. Yeah, so I'm trying to slow them down as much as possible and make it cost so much to play into my maxi, because I could have let that go and got a charge rule, but I just want to make sure that my opponent's starring is as scuffed as possible. And he goes if you didn't minion. ash that, I think you lost. Exactly. Uh, and now I know I 100% win. Because I can get Ryan to play really easy. Opponent has to negate that. That's three monsters. It's, it's going to let me. Right? So. Yeah, we bounce the eight scale. Yep. Negate that, and then you go normal summon flame eater game. <laughs> Basically, yeah. And I can imagine everyone goes, oh, this is a buy as soon as they see flame eater. And then they're like, what does this Guardian Slime card do? It has a lot of text on it. Wing Dragon Ara. Um, that's suspicious. And yeah, now we get to do the Ancient Chant trick again. And we have just enough attack points to run over that and win by exactly 100. Which is conveniently my life score. Holy cow. So get good at math, guys, if you play this deck as well. <laughs> Look for your, your kill ranges. Uh, they are surprisingly high. If you do Joker straight... And then tribute your five, um, your three knights. You end up with five thousand one hundred attack base. Have we ever and then figured you get out like why some of these nine. wins are written in gold? Is it just like if you win the coin flip or not? That's a very good question. I think so. Mm, we can find out by comparing these two, at the very least. Actually, I don't think it's going to show us if you win the coin flip or not. I'll go second if I win the coin flip. No, I'll probably go second if I lose the coin flip as well. Actually, that said, top four. Huh, yeah. Yeah, uh, this hand is also okay. It's well, it's actually pretty scuffed, but I don't lose to uh, Burn Strategy because I've got the Perform Age. Uh, yeah, this one ends up super slow start. Uh, ah, I remember this opponent. Uh, Invoke Shadol. Well, Windows a pain if you're trying to special summon a lot of monsters. Yeah, Winda is a huge problem, uh, and you'd think in this deck it would cause you a lot of problems uh, trying to play your Joker straight, but you're gonna like this. You're gonna like this because I've I've drawn the guard, hard drawn the guardian. So yeah, opponent runs into that, deals me 600 damage, and that means I can summon Guardian Slime, one special summon. And that's only one special summon for Egyptian God Slime. And then the Ra is a normal summon. Yeah. God sign. Yeah, I took the Blaze uh, Blaze Cannon out at this point because it wasn't doing enough for me. Uh, so all I can search for is Ancient Chant. I mean, that's okay. 
No, 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 it's just uh, for, for chat's benefit. Yep, and opponent concedes because they're like, I'm I'm not losing to this garbage. And <laughs> Connection failed. The, the opponent pressed the X. F4 <laughs> on that game. So that is went... how much they were punished by the Winged Dragon of Rock. So you, uh, you went second, so I assume that because it was white here, you lost the coin flip, he won it and chose to go first. So if I am correct that this gold win means you won the coin flip, then you'll be going second in this, our final replay of the day. Yeah, it is. Uh, then we can scoot over the deck, answer any questions you've got, and uh, call it there. The Honda Civic, the most dangerous of opponents. And you are, in fact, uh, going second, so... Going second is pretty hard in the virtual world, I'm not gonna lie. It yeah. is not the most fun experience you can have. And he's opened reasonably well. He opened Kowloon, which is like the best thing they can hope to see. So, and oh yeah, he's got Lulu. Uh, yep, he's got full data escape combo FDC. Yeah, opponent opens extremely well this game. Charidor. But like Marek Ishtar, we like to punish people and cause them immense amounts of pain. Best card. And we're gonna do this right. Bring back the Lulu, bring back the Nyan Nyan. Synchro Summon. Oh no, Xyz Summon Ptolemy. How the things have changed. This is like where I would have been like, Synchro Summon for Vermilion Dragon Mech. Pop my own Dragon Mech, get back my tuner. Special Summon Lala, Cloud Castle. He is doing fancier things than I know how to do. Yeah, so I actually, that, I think it's Sen Shen, is that his name? The, Shen Shen um, is the QB, yeah. Yeah, this card is actually a huge problem for my deck, because obviously everything I need to go to the graveyard and resolve it. So I'm eyeing that up as my call to the grave target, above pretty much anything else. Because uh, Left Arm Offering is very, very risky to play, and uh, for that grass. Especially since True King of All Calamities is... Uh, Gonna stop me from playing. Yeah, usually it does. And he shotguns it right away. He fears him Kaiju's more than he fears impermanence. Yeah, and he calls the correct attribute. Uh, if you're playing against 60 card deck, the fairy tale snow is something that you're definitely looking for. I think you call light because of Eldlick the Golden Lord. Oh, I would I would have thought Fairy Tale Snow, but again, if that depends on whether or not my opponent looked in my deck. Yeah, I'm going to turn off the uh, Sensen because it means that during my turn if my opponent does summon another one, uh, which then means I can go ahead and resolve my cards. Alright, down comes Kieran. We have Maxi. How do you not die here? He's got the Joker's Wild. Detach, call it again. Yep. We take hit one. We take, take hit, hit two. two. Guardian slime. Opponent, you, this blows the opponent's trap guard. Completely fine. Uh, we get our search. We're not going to be using ancient. We're not going to be using Ra in this last game. But my opponent has left a nice, juicy monster with less than two thousand attack in attack mode. So I go ahead and just uh, special summon the queen. Normal summon the knight. Opponent can't attack through that. If opponent wants to extend over that, I've got a Maxim play. So they go ahead and make the, the Gaia Dragon, Divine's yeah. Deuce. And I've got the Droplets. Droplets is an amazing card. Yeah, Droplets just a pretty, like just a little. Oh, it has extra value in this deck because all of your knight cards add stuff back to your hand, so you can actually pay the discard cost uh, on your <laughs> follow up droplets and draw them over multiple turns. So it ends up having such crazy synergy. And obviously, then it protects them from responding against. Um, you can basically discard a, a spell, a monster, and a trap, and your opponent can't respond to your thing at all. The grass for the 18? Uh, you'll see. Chant, hat Tricker, that's a free summon. Left arm, Joker straight. He's just going for the pop, he doesn't want to see a rank 4, I guess. Yeah, uh, I was actually going to go for the Tornado Dragon in that, that trap card. 
Uh, because I need it in order to get my double or nothing through. Droplet. <laughs> no, I no could have went left. for I could have went for raw here actually, but I ended up going a different line. And this is just as strong because you've got so many acts. You've got so many ways to act double and resolve it that. You can just OTK people out of nowhere. Alright, oh, no, no, that grass looked greener. Uh, I'm actually just styling at this point. I don't need to do that, and I just realized why am I getting like, making moves that I don't need to make? Uh, I'll go ahead and just slam over that for 8 5 and clear my opponent out and proceed to platinum 1, put my arms up in the air for carrying the Wing Dragon of Ra all the way to the top of the rank ladder. Very well done. Oh yeah, this was a lot harder than the other two climbs. Uh, but if you want to pull the deck list up, I'll quite happily answer any questions in chat uh, that you've got for any of the decisions or things I'd recommend that you'd, uh, you should change. And of course, I'll do a full proper deck profile for the, the YouTube channel. If you're not already following us on that, please do so. Uh, we want to keep posting great content and it's good to get any feedback from you guys about what you like to see and what you don't. What would you would I change? change? The wolves would come out, uh, those, ultimately, your only way of resolving that is if you start with that grass looks greener. They are cool level 4, uh, so you can use it to make the Ptolemyus. Uh, but there's other level 4s that you could just special summon that would cause less grief. I could, for example, play another Perform Age Flame Eater. Uh, that card gives me my Guardian Slimes. Unfortunately, there's not enough ways to add the Guardian Slime to your hand. I searched the entire card pool. And there is a card that lets you do it, but it pays half your life points, which conveniently is not what you want to do with the Winged Dragon of Rock. <laughs> then if you go, if you summon it and then turn into Ancient Egyptian God Slime, uh, you've only got 7,000. So you can't play uh, that card. Just as a quick caveat, when he said Ptolemaeus, he means Paladynamo and not the banned rank 4 monster. Oh yeah, sorry, I mean Paladynamo. Uh, my bad guys, yeah. Dan, call me out on that a lot sooner. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself to take my name. Uh... <laughs> So, the hand traps, I'd probably go up to a third draw on Lockbird. Uh, I, I felt good with... I felt great after I took Maxi down to one. I wasn't as often as I wanted to. And it, I was drawing a lot of the night cards, and the problem is, is that then in my hand, I can't actually resolve my Joker straight. Uh, I was playing card destruction for a while, because you keep adding cards back from your graveyard to your hand, so you can resolve big card destructions later. But uh, it ended up just not being good enough. You can also play uh, Magical Stone Excavation. Uh, because you can afford the discard costs. That one was a little bit more promising because you can add back your monster reborn or they add blossom that grass looks greener. Okay, fine, I'll throw out two cards and play it again. Uh, so this one was unironically actually pretty good uh, for this deck, if you want to consider it. Uh, I felt good. I was thinking about playing the third lightning storm. Uh, in the end, I what I the reason I only played two is I went, why am I playing this card? And it was like I wanted Harpy's Feather Duster copies two and three, and lightning storm was the best alternative. There's like red uh, and so I, I suppose. I want my opponent to have monsters in attack mode uh, because then I can just run over them. So essentially, yeah, I could play. Well, I can't play red reboot because I pay half my life points, so it makes it harder to OTK. Yes. Although you technically only pay half your life to activate it from the hand. I think there's oh, a, a gross underestimation of Red Reboot just actually being set on the field that people are like underestimating about the card. Red Reboot is a fantastic card, don't get me wrong. My life points wasn't so important. Ah, it says if you play it from your hand. Yeah, like there, there is nothing stopping you from just treating this as Royal Decree for free. Like you can just set this and body them. If you're going first, which is great. Which I'm mm. not in this not, And not in the but, raw deck, but just in general. I, I did, when I mentioned that, forget that life points are super important. But for the viewers at home, don't sleep on how obnoxiously good Red Reboot actually is by just being set on the board. The other one's uh, evenly matched as well. That card, you can actually put this on the field. <laughs> yeah, evenly matched is a very, very good card. Particularly when you find it stuff like Eldritch. This deck did struggle a lot versus Drytron when they went first. Uh, the really frustrating thing is, is you basically are 
draw kaiju or droplets or you lose and you're playing 60 cards so that's way less often to happen you never want to be in a situation where you draw free kaijus so you can't play free unfortunately i did actually get an opening hand against free kaijus and then couldn't win the game and aotk me right after the kaiju there also uh, a game against what where you had three kaijus drytron oh yeah that'll uh, be... and i'm like if you have two it's gonna be okay right because you tribute their monster and then you special summon the uh Gardara, and then you've got to make one more special summon and you can almost summon your guardian slime or you can then tribute your monsters for a gigantic wing dragon or attack over the Gardara. uh but if you have three it ends up being really bad and sphere mode sphere mode wasn't good enough because opponents just link summon and you never get it unfortunately yeah if anything, Sphere Mode's a nice, like, uh, the opposite. Like, side-decking Wing Dragon over Raw for when people Sphere Mode you. Yeah, and there is that Generator card that I talked about, the Link 2 monster that you put me onto. Yes. Uh, if you want to put that up in the search bar. Trans. Yeah. Geonator Transverser. Nobody knows about this card, but essentially you can swap control of two monsters. So you give them the Sphere Mode in a zone that you can point to. And now you can use this to get the sphere mode back, but you've got to put just too many resources in for it. So it ends up being a cute trick, and then you get four fives and attack when Dragon Ra, which is okay, but it's not how this deck is trying to win the game. Hmm. Yeah, I like Transverser against uh, the Zodiac stuff because you summon her pointing at Dryden, and the Dryden can't pop itself or her or what you're giving them, and you just take their Dryden. You're like, thanks. <laughs> that is pretty cute. Uh, I would like to, I'd really like to go up to 15 cards in the extra deck, but it's ED Dynamite and Banquet of Millions is legal. Just don't do it, because the bots that you play against give you free wins. Uh, I do have I feel like Banquet. <laughs> that card, uh, it's just really unfun, and you end up in situations where, like, I am playing the free damage jugglers and the free uh, flame eaters, while I would be playing free flame eaters, uh, and you could still lose, uh, just because you don't roll them. And that was quite frustrating. Uh, what else was a consideration in this deck? Uh, question would I go down one called by the grave and go up one cross site designator? Since you can preemptively play the cross site designator, banish Ash Blossom so you can resolve left arm offering. That is something I would strongly consider. Uh, I wouldn't play any more Joker's Wild. Joker's Wild. You run out of use for very, very quickly. Because uh, we're not playing face card fusion in this deck. Uh, it just kind of like, you resolve Joker straight, you get it back. You resolve the second Joker straight, and then you're never going to resolve it again. It just becomes discard fodder for the, fodder for the rest of the game. So you only ever really want one of those. Makes sense. I still have only ever, like, I got this in my first pack. And then I got this when I crafted one. And I have not gotten another Royal Finish card since. It's been two months. That is quite an unfortunate story. It sounds like you need to open more packs. I'm just like thinking of like how many royal and like glossy like raws and like everything you pulled, and I'm just like I've literally only ever gotten access code talker. I Which would consider granted, I summoned them every game. So. If you if you wanted to cut the poker knights entirely, you could go from nine because uh, uni zombie can just discard a card from you. Uh, so you can discard the guardian slime and get your Raz that way, and then you can Mizuki, but your attack, your Winged Dragon Raw attack is going to be a little bit lower, but your deck overall is going to be... Like, mm. I was saying, I really liked the Poker Knights with uh, the Utopia stuff. Ultimately, I decided to not go down that line a bit more, because I've already done the Utopia profile, which you can, which will be on the YouTube channel, and I was like, I want to make sure you guys have something a little bit more interesting to watch for this week. So I went down the lines of Poker Knights Raw, and whole lot of fun and still ways to improve this deck I, I i don't think this is the final version i think the raw package is something that could be played in more decks uh, because ancient chant uh, allowing you to just one shot people out of nowhere is so so powerful yeah ancient chant overperforms compared to the other cards from that batch of raw support yeah it's unfortunate that uh blaze cannon is kind of win more uh, like whenever there's only very specific times that you'd want it which is like to negate infinite impermanence but if you're attacking over a monster they probably can't impermanence you anyway unless they've set it like there are there are niche situations where it comes up but a lot of the time like you'll draw it and you'll draw bad uh then there's the trap card 
Uh, there's a spell that lets you keep getting Monster Reborn, but we only play the one boss, so that doesn't really make sense. And then you've got the Trap card, which lets you pay life points to pump a Ra, but Ra already does that. So in this deck, we don't really want that Trap card either. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good overview of the deck. Uh, I'm, I'll put the uh, full videos up. I'll talk through all the combos and hands and stuff on the uh, on the video when I get to it. But yeah, not really much else to say. A whole where a few guys trying out if you want to try something a little bit different. You can get the platinum one a bit easy. Well, I say easy. It will take work, but you can get them. <laughs> what I really hope they do with the royal rares is. They create like royal upgrade tickets that you get for getting to platinum one each season. So I can then choose one card in my deck to turn into a royal rare. Wouldn't that be nice? Because there's no, there's currently no reward for getting to platinum one. There's not even a tournament that's exclusive to those players. And I really feel like Konami should be creating content to incentivize you to get to that. In fact, you are incentivized to stay in gold because you get easier opponents for the event. Yep. Well. It wasn't necessarily like easier. I just wanted to see the uh, different kinds of decks that you would see. Yeah, because like uh, when you, if you uh, last event, all I saw was nothing but zodiac, 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 zodiac. So I wanted to like actually see if I would have more variety in a lower ladder. And I did. Yeah. Like all four of my opponents won different things. So so it ends up being a lot better content. It just means that you don't level your account to plat, and I feel like that's kind of a really bonkers way to... Oh, my first god card. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, I tell you what, you can do the next profile, you can play Obelisk, and you can get it to plat one. <laughs> we can talk about your replays. I have a 12-hour uh, drive to Montreal in three days, so I'm gonna just... Uh, I'm not gonna be doing all of the driving, so when it's not my turn, I'm gonna be grinding Master Duel on my phone, and I'll get plat one this week. Speaking of which, um, we're coming up to the point where we're refreshing the bundles soon, right? Uh, yeah, on the second, I believe. Yeah, I'm actually really curious to see if there's a Forbidden Limited list update, if some new cards come into the game. Uh, if you haven't picked up the gem bundles, the discounts that you get for the first three months, those are expiring real soon. They're pretty good value because the gem conversion, gem to pound cost, or sorry, gem to dollar cost, depending on where you're watching from, is awful. In this game, I think 200 gems is worth a dollar, uh, which is quite expensive when you want to buy uh, packs, especially to the volume that you end up buying them in this game. Like, 10 packs will get you maybe between 1 and 3 Ultra Rares. And most of those Ultra Rares are going to be jank, let's be honest, unless you're opening a secret pack. So, picking up those gem packs pretty early is, is a pretty good investment if you don't mind spending money. If you want to be completely free-to-play, then obviously ignore it. But, yeah, the game needs some new cards to the pool. I think the Forbidden Limited list needs to be jotted around a little bit. Like What the? Okay, I've never seen a pack do that before. That was cool. Yeah, me either. Uh, what's this? The pack like glowed and then just like swelled. I got glossy contract with Exodia. Royal rare. <laughs> just, nope, a it's just a Just a Felgram. <laughs> I mean, it was a super that like became an ultra. Maybe that's what it means. Oh, uh, possibly. Yeah, Eva needs to go so badly. Like Drytron and BFD, kind of the cards which forced me to play Kaiju's Index and three copies of Droplets because you cannot play into those fields without those cards uh and even then it's really hard to to play and it's just like when you run out you run out of slots so quickly in your deck uh that it it feels a bit bad but i have to build so specifically for those matchups got my soul crossing for this obelisk deck i'm supposed to be building <laughs> hey chat out of interest would you like to see an abc obelisk deck getting to plat one is that content you guys would like Fist of Fate. <laughs> I mean, the Fist of Fate is an amazing card. Don't yes, get me wrong. Yes, I like that is so much better than Slifer's card that I I almost feel jilted by the experience. Seven hundred percent says uh, Megadrust that he wants to see you do an Obelisk ABC. That sounds cursed. So the the general idea is that I should be able to just defuse the ABC Dragon into three monsters for Obelisk and kill my opponent. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you got Fist of Fate, which is just a Harpy's Feather Duster uh, negation, and it kills your opponent's monster and makes them very, very dead because like negates the effects until the end of turn. I really like Fist of Fate. The problem is, is I feel like in that Obelisk deck, you're going to be wanting to play uh, Pop Prosperity 
uh, for the consistency. But then if you're playing ABCs, do you have room to be resolving that? Or would you even play that? Uh, I'd play Pot of Prosperity and Banish 3. And I would just pick, like, the Cyber Dragon Nova and Infinity, because if it's going through, I don't need those cards as much. Yeah, that seems good. Soul Crossing is also an insane card. It's just so good. I got two of them. I also picked up a playset of Guardian Slime. I'm on my way. No, we won't play. Guardian Slime only works with Ra. <laughs> Not actually saying that, uh, Ancient Egyptian God Slime can be treated as free tributes for an obelisk situation. So. I'm not gonna open these and I'm just gonna click skip. <laughs> I'm just we're uh we're at the end of the stream here, so Barbaros. A glossy Barbaros. And the really bad Oh, uh, I slime. really wanted that reactor slime to be good. Oh your next ten packs is a guaranteed ultra rare. Mm, maybe it'll be a royal finish obelisk. You got I you mean, need a fist of fate? I got you on fist of fate. You've got plenty of fist of fates. Yeah. <laughs> My first really... copy of Meta Reflex Slime, 30 packs in. Okay. I really like Ancient Egyptian God Slime. I think this card is super good. It forces your opponent to target it, um, and it's free tributes. And it can't be destroyed by battle, so it can actually be a bit of a pain. Ha, <laughs> you'd have the gems to take advantage of that, that deal. Oh, in comes, in comes the credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll wait. The sale renews on like the second, and I still have to finish. Like, honestly, as fun as it's been, like exodiaing people, I'll probably just switch back to Attic Nister and burn through the rest of the. Um, I'll get yeah. like Plat One in like twenty games or whatever. Yeah, it's still super easy to take Attic Nister all the way to, all the way to the top of the ladder. It's not even a challenge, to be honest. Like you, put, you come against Troy Brigade Zoo. Like, I've actually said on our YouTube channel that I'm not going to play any more uh, Agnista versus Tribrigade because I just feel like I'm I'm the bully in school. And I'm right. taking this lunch money every time I play. It's like, just beat it up. Beat it up. Are oh, you just spectating a game here? Ah, uh, just to get my five gems. Ah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so, should we call it a night there? Uh, yeah, I'll call it an afternoon. You got it. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. We're different time zones. But, guys, thank you so much for coming along. Really, really appreciate having you. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Please make sure to uh, follow our YouTube channel so you can catch all the content we post up on there. Uh, that'll be a really big help. And again, if you've got any comments or anything, feel free to shoot us messages. Uh, you've got access to Dan's Discord, uh, so you can go ahead and uh, let us know. Keep sending in those replays for you. We didn't actually cover a guest replay because we had MBT on and we covered his. But we do want to see the cool stuff that you are doing, what you're playing, and uh just yeah it's, it's really cool to go through and cast and try and figure out how to play your games yeah guys it's always wonderful to have you here oh uh yeah it, it's uh it's always great to have you guys here and the more we do this like the more we learn like what you guys want to see and then we spend the next like two weeks trying to make that so <laughs> it's uh your, your feedback is everything. We read every comment on every YouTube video. We try to reply to them if a reply is warranted. It, it's just, we're making this stuff for you. If we were just like making this for ourselves, we would just talk to each other over Discord and get Plat 1 the first day of every month and then not look at Master Duel for 29 days. So it, yeah, it, it helps much. a great deal to know like what kind of stuff you guys want to see more of so that we can actually spend a couple of weeks trying to Get the Winged Dragon of Raw to Plat 1. So please uh, oh, yeah. do use like those uh, those social links that you guys see. Um, and just let us know if uh, there, there's something you need more or less of from us. Because that, that means a lot to us. We care about you guys. And we want to make sure that we're doing the best job we can for you. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, guys, we'll catch you again for the next episode of Climb. It'll be in two weeks' time. I believe that will be the 10th of April. Uh, and I want to say a special thank you to MBT swinging by and any followers that stayed with us to the end from uh, who came to watch MBT. Uh, we're very grateful that you guys decided to stick around and enjoy the show. Take care, guys. Take care.